Yeah. Yeah. I hit the button, but I'm actually here on time. Yeah. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the stream. There's no stream today. Uh, Kima Dog, I'm going to tell you, I I wasn't planning on coming um, on the Zombie Chris stream last night. That was kind of a, a surprise. So this was, this was planned. I, I did put the thing in the community tab, so um, I'm letting people know that I am actually going live tonight for a little while. Just going to wait till everybody gets in here and we could talk. Hopefully, if you can see me good, hear me good, anybody, if anybody's in the stream, let me know if you can hear me, see me. I'm trying something completely new because I'm doing completely different streaming tech and everything. So this is not, not your average stream, my friends. But it's the beginning of a new era, hopefully, if it works. <laughs> um, uh, on time, actually, for once. Um, but, yeah. Hanging out here, visuals are grainy. That I'm sorry, I'm trying to. It's because my internet, my internet in here is always so spotty. And I know for those who have come on the streams before, it is, um, it can be kind of spotty. So let me see because I'm going to, it, it could, it, it's probably me. Um, again, my internet in here, um, is always, is always so, so all the time. Um, but. I apologize, but we're not, I mean, you're not going to be looking at me the whole time. Don't worry. Um, I have stuff I want to show, so it's not just going to be, and hopefully that works. We're going, we're going to try it out. We're, we're trying all kinds of things. So thank you for being here, Derek. Thank you for pulling through and uh, hanging out. Um, cause, cause I, I kind of want the stream to be a, a more like low key one, you know, I'm going to turn the music off. Um, that was a little treat for y'all who were here early. Um, but no, I kind of want the stream to be low key. I kind of want it to be a chill stream, just kind of hanging out and talking, um, about HHN just in general, talking about new stuff, talking about old stuff, um, better than a fear factor. Yeah. We don't talk about the fear factor, um, the fear factor stream because that, um, yeah, um, that, that's kind of why I wanted to do a stream today. Honestly, like, yeah, we're going to talk about the map. I don't want the map to be the whole stream because, I talked about it at length last night on Zombie Chris's stream, um, and I also uh, talked about it in a whole video. So I'm not going to talk about the map only. Um, I do um, shopping Universal Vintage. What are you looking for? Because, I mean, I, I love looking at Vintage Universal stuff, um, just in general. Um, but especially Halloween Hornets Vintage stuff. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I talked about the map at length multiple times. So we're going to talk um, about it. Uh, we're, we're actually uh, recording in the Dreamport Studios. Um, so not Universal Studios, a little uh, less, more surrounded by stuff. No rides here. Um, hats. Uh, there's some really cool vintage hats. There's so many cool vintage hats um, within Universal. I think I think the vintage, like, I'm going to say it like this. And this, I'm a fan, you know, you know, I'm a fan of Universal. I'm sure you are. Um, that logo, the marquee logo they could literally put that on anything and it would look great because that's like one of the best logos they've really, and I've been wanting them to make a horror nights, like literally something that says like Halloween horror nights in the same style as that logo. I know they did it in 30 a little bit because they had the red and white, which was nice, but doing that like a Halloween horror nights logo like that, which I mean, I don't see it too being too far away because they, they love that marquee logo too. I found a sick Kong bag. I'm not a, can I, I could put the chat right here. Yeah. So I mean, so for those who don't know, I'm um I used to stream through YouTube and um I am now streaming through StreamYard. So I can come pop on anybody's chats on the on the screen. Um, so that'll be that's lots of fun. Um, so anyway, this chat's fun to sit Kong bag on eBay. Mel's driving hats, those are also really nice. Um, really nice. Stuff. Maybe I'll do a like a vintage Universal stream at some point where I where we just look at old stuff. I think that could be a lot of fun. Um, I haven't watched the stream. Must be fun to see. Um, I don't know if you're talking about the. I don't know if this when you're talking about this stream, you're talking about the Zombie Chris stream. But I'm going to I'm going to plug. Going to plug Zombie Chris's channel. Hopefully, you can see this. Um, this, it's this stream here, almost three hours <laughs> long. I'm obviously 
don't have to watch the whole thing, but um, we break down at Dean detail maps, locations, schematics, all kinds of stuff. So this stream right here, go check it out. Go subscribe to Zombie Chris if you have not already. Um, that is, it's a given. You gotta subscribe to Zombie Chris. Um, hey, welcome, Chris. <laughs> um, great. Um, I'm glad you're here. Um, let's see. Some chats here. God, I want the black HHN jacket. Um, are you talking about the jean jacket? Because, man, those things are just worth so much money now. The 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 those old like the not even old from thirty. They had those, and I mean, you can get a new one. It's like two hundred bucks on eBay if you can find one, which is insane. Thanks for the great stream in the park the other day and pushing through when the internet was bad. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you for sticking with me while the internet was bad because that was uh, that, that you. I, it came through a little bit on camera, but you you all won't, don't know how frustrated I was because I was just trying to like get to a point, and I felt like when the, when the discussion was getting really good, that's when the internet would get really bad. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Just finished watching that stream today. It, it's a full journey. It's a full journey, uh, full adventure. But uh, Zombie Chris and I, we we broke down pretty much everything. So. Um, I'm thinking if we if there was any odd points that we didn't talk about or that I just want to emphasize that we could talk about it here, we could show the map for those who maybe haven't seen it yet or who maybe didn't watch that stream um, or just don't watch it on Chris's channel. But again, why aren't you doing that? Um, longer than Endgame, uh, y'all are not ready for the next Barrel House Boys podcast episode because <laughs> the three hour trend is not too far off. But um, I'm just going to that's where I'm going to leave that. Some of Christmas, my great guy. He's awesome. Shout out to Chris. Um, HHN 30. So, yeah, so that jacket, that jacket is so sick. I mean, the one they did for 31 was nice. I do have that one. I got it when it was like 75, 80% off whenever they were like at the end of the um, end of the event. But it, uh, yeah, I, that, that 31 was fantastic. Scooby-Doo did a Scooby-Doo hype. I, I know it literally would be like getting to such a great point. But that's not going to happen here, hopefully. I know my internet's been a little spotty, so I apologize again for that. But again, I'm not just going to show my face the whole time. I just kind of wanted to get get some people in here before we start talking about maps and stuff. I only get to see one half of Zombie Zombie Dream live. Is that is that what we're calling it, Zombie Dream? Is that the is that the uh, is that the band name? Um, but yeah, so. Before we talk about HHM, before we talk about any of that, uh, how are y'all's days going? Um, it's Friday night, so, you know, Friday night's fun. I know I like to do a lot of my streams on Fridays. Um, I know the last one was Sunday, I think, but Friday, um, Friday fun with HHM. You know, opening night's always on a Friday. So it's so there's there are X amount of weeks we have until... HHN, whenever it is, whenever they announce the opening date, because we don't know that yet. My money's going to be on August 30th, I think 30th, 31st, whatever, the, the last day of August, because September 1st last year was the opening. So that Friday, whatever that Friday is, like the first weekend of September is my, that's my, um, my thing. Um, uh, 20 years since the Scooby-Doo Love Action movie. They could they could do a house. I would really like them to do like kind of how SeaWorld does a, um, what do you call it? Um, the Spooktacular, like the kids event. I think it would be great to have Scooby-Doo. I don't think he needs like a scary house, but I think like some fun costume characters running around, like not just the main gang, but like having some of the, the, the creeps and the villains and the monsters and stuff running around, I think could be a lot of fun. And maybe doing a spooky not scary house because i feel like scooby-doo would be kind of it could be fun as like a horror night's house depending on what avenue they took but i think it is one of those properties that is definitely like more 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 catered towards younger audiences but i think could appeal to the nostalgia of both i mean because scooby-doo has been around forever uh preparing for my two week long pilgrimage to hhn end of september congrats um hopefully it all goes well for you been a heavy winter where I live in Norway. Shout out to Norway. So I'm looking forward to HHM vacation with no snow. That is that's the thing. We don't have no snow. Snow here. It's gonna be hot. We're gonna, probably gonna get rain if you're coming. Um, really anytime in September, but especially like opening weekend, probably gonna get some rain. But you know, it's not snow, so it's that is something to look forward to. And shout out to Norway. Um, can't wait to see 
a live stream of a static screen again this year. Yeah, I wonder what the marketing is going to be like for this year. Because last year, it was all over the place. Like, right, we had that stuff kind of early on, like a lot of the little teasers and the fog and the runes and all this stuff. Then it felt like it kind of dipped where there was so long where there was no announcements. We got, and then we just kind of got it like, boom, um, Last of Us, boom, Stranger Things, boom, everything all in one day. And it wasn't like, yeah, I, I like when they kind of have a flow. And we're going to get maybe if we get like one house here, one house here, even if you don't announce originals, because I know they don't like to do that anymore, really announcing originals on their own, which I don't know why they don't do that, because the original um, the original houses are in the, the, they're they're Orlando signatures, you know, so I don't know why they don't do that for some of them, not maybe not for all of them, but this comment right here. Yeah, yeah. This is what we would name for sure. If they ever were to do Scooby Doo, so many fun quotes. Also, yes, it was it, it was all over the map. And I think, and, and here's my my take on this. And I feel like this could be kind of controversial in general, especially considering the community and at large. I think part of the reason why we love the maps so much is because of sometimes the the lapse in information, not just for people like, you know, Chris and I and other content creators to make stuff for y'all to like talk about HHM because it, it, we can't do this stream every week because there's not enough to talk about. Um, but I think that's why people put a lot of emphasis on the maps because it becomes something where you can get hyped about HHM. Like, yeah, there's a, there's an angle of like trying to know everything first, but there's also like, for me, at least the way I appreciate the maps is just generally getting excited. I think that's what I care about the most. That's why I loved this map in particular because there was no, no text. It was all symbols. It was all unknown. We kind of were guessing. We're still guessing, and I think that's a lot of fun when it comes to, to doing it. So, um, yeah, I think that, that that's how I feel about it. I think that, that that's why we love the map so much, um, is sometimes because of the sort of spotty announcement seasons, especially in the years post COVID, where. Again, you're getting maybe one, two, three house announcements. Maybe, um, maybe at scare zones, forget it. Like I feel like announcing scare zones. The days of those, I, that's long gone. Uh, just like, oh, we're putting a scare like, you know, because I feel like the scare zones kind of almost are like just an extra part of the experience. The houses are it. And for me, like I love scare. I have a scare zone shirt on, even though I don't really love the scare zones from this year. I love scare zones i think that it i think they're, they can be great regardless of whether they're super scary or not i think they can be great just environments because you don't have to like conga line through them for the most part and the scare zones that you do have to conga line through i don't really like them like personally like shipyard shipyard would this wasn't for me because all those san fran zones really just don't they don't hit for me because of that reason now i do i did like conjure the dark um, but like, I just, I don't know. I just like Conrad of the Dark also had this problem too, even though it was a cool scare zone, cool stage shipyard, I think completely went off with that. And also with, um, um, jungle of doom, love that scare zone conceptually theming costume sets, beautiful, but it's just, it's just the, the idea of this constant people everywhere and kind of having to do the conga line. And that's not something universal can really do. I think maybe some of these scare zone locations should be reconsidered or expanded in certain places where they can. Obviously, I know there's parade coming back and shows and things like that. Like you can't just put scare zones everywhere, but I do think there are um, places like San Fran. In my opinion, I think that scare zone maybe should be retired at least for now. Maybe maybe go back to the wharf, but although the wharf is also kind of tight, so it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know what the, the solution is, but scare zones. My point in saying this is like scare zones can be fun and can be a big event. I mean, looking back to like trick or treat, killer clowns, um, the vamp series, all that stuff, they like those kind of stood their own as like we are scare zones at first. And then obviously a couple of those became houses, but kind of just allowing those things to stand out rather than just saying houses versus IPs. And, and, and you know, even like like I said, marketing original houses last year, dueling dragons. Maybe I won't say Dueling Dragons, but definitely Yeti and like Oddfellow, 
I think of those three maybe, but mostly Yeti and Oddfellow were like standout. Like Yeti had one of the longest lines of outside of Stranger Things and Last of Us consistently. And it's just people love them Yetis. Like regardless, like I think, um, I think GP, you know, the public and us, like we, we, we love that stuff. Um, give a few chats here. Uh, yes, the anticipation is so fun. It, it's so fun. That's why, that's why we do this. That's why I do this at least. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to be all in it as much as I was last year. I've said that before. Um, I said that in the video, but I don't want to be in it to the point where I'm just like so overwhelmed by it. And it's like this rush of like having to constantly be on speculation and talking about it. Like I want to keep it, keep it lax, keep it chill. Like having these fun streams. Like I, I want to do a lot of stream stuff with this this year because it's just a lot of fun to have this constant banter about this stuff and getting a lot more, a lot more conversation. Um, yeah, it's just fun to it's just fun to look at. It's fun to be a part of. It's fun to consider, and I think that's what's so fun about this point. Especially, it's like we have no confirmation, we have no direction. So it's kind of like, yeah, this can come, this can come, this can come. We we don't know. Maybe it could be any one of those. It could be none of those. At this point, we're it's so early that we don't really have an indication of a whole lot right now. If you're you know just looking at rumors and online and maps and things like that. Scare zones are great for atmosphere. 100% agree. Zombie Chris, please, can we get a new tagline? Please. Um, I I don't want to see you in the fog either because that does have such like a correlation with knots and, and their thing. And, and they can kind of claim that because they're the OG. But I think something fresh. I, I I liked like Maximum Screamage, Fear to the Max. Those are like, what, 29. Um, we, know, we know it scares you. The like, true fear lies within. I know some of those were like quotes, but still, like that, and using that in 28, your soul is requested. That was 27. Like, you, they were felt like they were for each year, it was something new, something exciting, something that related to that year versus never go alone, never go alone, never go alone, don't go alone. Like, yeah, that's a cool idea. And I know they're trying to promote the Scream Squad thing, like, go with your friends, come with your friends bring us more tickets with your friends, right? But I think that there could be there could be ways of saying that too that is not exactly just never go alone, the same t-shirt, mug, <laughs> every every time. And like I said, see in the fog, it's a fun tagline. I don't think it works as much for Horror Nights as it does for Knots, but that's just me. Um, I'm so far behind, I'm sorry. Um, I'm angry they didn't do it. Yes, I would love an announcement for Unmasked. And I was I was so thinking they were going to. Same thing with Exorcist, honestly. I mean, technically they were closer to doing that because they made the trailer. But yeah, I felt like they were just kind of like, and the monsters are here. Which, I mean, I, people kind of expect it, but I wish these, these monsters would have gotten a little more representation. Also in merch, they only had a couple of items. The shirt and the glass. And of course, like the original, like whatever the, the shirt with all the houses on it, um, getting fogged in the face. So going back to scare zones. Yep. Um, how do you feel the lack of a lagoon show? Now we're going to get back to this because I know there are more chats here, but I have some interesting opinions on the second show. And I'm going to say I'm going to save that for for later. Um, I haven't heard people heard from here what people think of the scare zone location in Hollywood. I am curious what they think here. Um So you're so you're so you're saying like how people feel about the Hollywood like how locals feel about the Hollywood scare zones because I, I I know or how they feel about the Orlando scare zones because I know you're a West Coaster Kima dog so I I'm I'm curious. Um, uh, yeah. Um, Um, so how they feel about Hollywood scare zones? I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's also like for every everybody, whether you're West Coaster, West Coaster, East Coaster, I feel like you kind of have this like the grass is greener on the other side, right? Like West Coast, what West Coasters complain about, East Coasters will be like, oh my god, I, we like we love that, or vice versa. I mean, I know there's a lot of Orlando people that complain about houses and say, or like East Coasters in general, complain about certain houses, and say, oh, this is not. Maybe not up to code, maybe not up to standard, or but then people from the West Coast come over and like, oh my God, we have you're y'all are able to have multiple sound stages, you know, like not not just everything's in a tent. Um 
maybe this year, but um, just in general, like more bit grander scale with scare zone sets and things like that. Like it, it's just it, but then, you know, I know a lot of East coasters kind of romanticize the, the aggression and the, and the sort of excitement of the scare actors, like how they can get in your face and they can get a little crazier than they can here. Um, so it, it's kind of, I think it's kind of a, a perspective thing. I know a lot of people like certain scare zone locations. I like central park, although I do think, it just doesn't work that well for a scare zone. I think aesthetically it's beautiful, but in terms of crowd flow anymore, it's it's just so crowded. Um, Vamp sixty nine was my group's favorite zone ever. We stayed in that zone partying for hours. That and that's great, and I'm so glad. And I, I liked Vamp sixty nine. I liked sitting. I like those kind of scare zones where you can sit and kind of take it in. I know Chris, if you're still in here, I know he's a big. Uh, we're both big fans of Graveyard Deadly Unrest. Um, love that scare zone. That was a scare zone that I definitely did that a lot, especially like shooting and, and just kind of looking around and, and trying to like take in the ambiance. And I think that's what scare zones work for me. I, I haven't, I can't say I've been scared terribly in a scare zone, um, maybe once or twice. Um, but I can't say I've been like where I'm flailing my arms in the air, like completely scared. I, I, I can more appreciate them for the ambience. And I think that's what we have over Hollywood's in my opinion, because we have more room to build bigger sets. And even just, even in a small scare zone, there's a lot more in terms of like set and ambiance. Although I know Hollywood, y'all have these great backdrops, like the Parisian courtyard area. That's like perfect. Even like, even with limited, limited sets, you can make a fun location and make a fun ambiance out of it. Um, so yeah, lots of love here for Graveyard. Graveyard Horror. Graveyard is amazing. Graveyard was such a great scare zone. That's my favorite scare zone that I personally experienced. Um, it's pretty much unmatched. It's, it's pretty much not really much between one and two um, because just the music. The one thing I noticed was the audio engineering from the lightning going off every once in a while to the sort of haunting soundtrack and maybe the occasional brother sleep and death um, kind of narration, but I never really caught much of that. I more just kind of caught the the sounds and the and the music aspect of it. And I mean the costumes and and and, and they were and they had, they were aggressive over there. I think in some cases when they when they could be when it was in character as well, because a lot of them would like kind of stalk around, like look at you with this very like deadpan stare, and that was creepy enough. I was going back to this talking about um, Vamp. I have friends who joined HHM for the first time because of Vamp since they had seen it on TikTok and Snapchat. So I know there are people who get very defensive when it comes to scare zones being like photo ops. And I get it when it kind of comes to clogging a zone or making a zone not hit as hard because of just people with their phone out. And I, I get it. Um, it's something that... Obviously, I would want the characters and the public to kind of get, get along, understand each other's roles, not harass. Like, don't harass the characters for a picture. If they're not going to take a picture with you, they're not going to take a picture with you. Like, la like leave it be. Um, but I think that that zone kind of played into the fun. And I think they want to have one big fun zone. I mean, va the vamp zones, Sweet Revenge, um, uh, the Eddie zone from 30, and like kind of like a fun fun zone with some characters you may know some characters you may not but generally kind of a fun atmosphere that is less scary and more just like hey look at these cool costumes hey look at this cool kind of atmosphere to be in um and you know if it brings people to the event it brings people to the event i mean this is the same logic that happens with stranger things or the weekend or um uh, many of the other big ips that bring people to the event michael myers chucky whatever like they see, oh, wow, this looks like a lot of fun. This is a great looking house. This is a great looking zone or whatever. Or well, I like this IP. Never been to Halloween Horror Nights before, but now I'm interested because I like this IP, because I like this thing, and it's going to make me more inclined to go. So, yeah, that's 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 totally how, how I, I can see it. And I'm glad that you have sort of, you know, they kind of found their way to Horror Nights. I know there are some new people this year um, sort of, sort of, uh, you know, in the speculation game and the, in the rumor game. And I, I'm, you know, I'm not, I haven't been around for too long. So it's not like I'm, I'm talking as a veteran, but it's just interesting to see what, what brings people in, what grabs people's attention about this event. Um, 
They have got me, especially after a few drinks. The outskirts of the zone had some lingering maps. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. I I've said I might have said this before. I said this in Chris's stream. I did talk about this a little bit. I took my girlfriend for the first time to Halloween Horror Nights last year. It was her first ever Horror Nights event, her first ever haunt. So, and she went for Stranger Things, kind of attesting to my point, right? So we then we come out of Stranger Things. We do it for Stay and Scream because I'm like, uh, you know, we got to do it for Stay and Scream. Obviously, not do the line. That was really what she was there for. So I was like, okay, well, this we got to prioritize. We get out of Stay and Scream. We're maybe at the front end of Stay and Scream. So what, what 15, 10, 15 minutes once the gates open, we you know, like move our way through the through the queue, go through the house, whatever. So we come out of the house and then we go to the zone. We go to Vamp. So I'm like, oh, Vamp's gonna like Vamp's gonna be great because Vamp's not super scary. It's fun, is like energetic, and it's just like a vibe. I I figured that she would be into that. We get there, and because it's stay and scream, there are not a whole lot of people in the zone, which makes us prime targets. Even though I'm pretty good at not like displaying like I'm ready to be scared. Normally it's it's because I have a camera. Um, or it's just because I, I kind of just carry this look about me and, and it's not intentional. I'm not trying to be like, I, I'm not trying to have an RBF. It's just like, well, I don't know why it went super bright there. Um, but no, I'm not trying to, I don't like have an RBF. It's just like, that's just how I look all the, all, a lot of the time. Um, and especially at Horror Nights, like trying to keep, keep a straight face. So I'm growing in there and she's getting scared left and right because they were, and so at that point, like, yeah, it can be scary in some circumstances if you're in a weird spot and you're not like with a bunch of people that are kind of acting as shields for you to kind of navigate through the zone. Anyway, that was a tangent. Um, going back to this comment here, uh, this is surprising. So talking about BAM, um, most people say Stranger Things are another IP, not a zone. I think it kind of shows, though, the zones have power. I think the zones have power that people don't, like, you know, that people don't um, see, that people don't feel. Um, and that the universal doesn't really show off as much as maybe they used to. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, I think for me, I'm trying to think if it was like, cause I mean, for me, it was like the event. So y'all probably know I'm, re I'm fairly recent to this event. I have not been going for a whole lot of time, but it became, it, it took a grip over me and, and we've lost, like any semblance of who I was before I started going to Horror Nights is gone. <laughs> it, it is it is gone. But so I started going into a 31. I tried to go during 30 and I couldn't make it happen. It was just not working for me. My schedule, um, tickets, just, if it, you know, whether it was sold out or I, when I could go or I couldn't go with this day or the tickets were like super expensive. So either way, I couldn't. And what got me in was the icons, like all like seeing Jack and all that stuff. And I saw it that way. I was like, oh, man, like this looks really cool. So even though I knew Jack wasn't coming back in, in 31, I went because I was like, I want to experience this. I want to get to see this event. And it, so it wasn't like an IP that brought me in. It was just like the idea of the event, and especially like, cause I love, I'm, I'm a theme park nerd. I love original stories in theme parks. And I think, I think Horror Nights has some of the best original storytelling point blank period um, at the theme parks in terms of not only delivering this gallery of characters, what 10 11 different icons but also doing 10 new houses five four five, five to or four to six of them being completely original concepts year in year out for 32 years like so much lore it's where i built my channel off of like so that was what initially got me interested, but seeing these things, like I know people that only went to HHN to see the weekend or to see stranger things or to see ghostbusters when that was around, even though I wasn't going to that, I knew people who did. Um, so going kind of, I I'm hoping to maybe translate this into the map for this year, but um, I know we have a couple more tats here. I remember it was sad that we didn't have any comic book related. Okay. So that that's another, that's another uh, point that I want to talk about when we get to the map. Um, and, uh, I, I would love creep show. I would love creep show to come to Orlando zone or house. That is, that's the question. Do we do a zone or a house? Um, and that is something to think about in the future. So let's hop over to the map. Let's hop over to the map. Um, no, 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 no. let's see. I'm going to share my screen here on Twitter for Fortnite nightmares. And we are going to 
pop over here. Okay. Um, hopefully y'all could see this and hopefully you could see my screen here um, for the speculation map um, for 33 in, in Orlando. We're going to talk a little bit about Hollywood too. Lots of overlap, um, but I definitely want to focus this on Orlando. I'm an Orlando channel. And plus we have a lot more, I think, basis, especially for originals here. So um, let's start. I guess let's start with the, with the with the original. Yes, shout out to Horror Night Nightmares for this map, of course, all the time giving us these great maps. But I know there are plenty other um, sort of speculation forums that do great maps as well. So Horror Night Nightmares just has this first one out. But let's go. Let's go first to uh, let's go first to Soundstage Twenty Three A. So let's start. Like if you were to start with the event, the first thing you would see, first house you would see, Soundstage Twenty Three A. Now. What do we see here? So we see this um, South America, South American continent, Mexico, a little bit of Central America, looks like sort of the islands there. So we have a, a pretty big range. And I've heard a few different like theories about what this could be. Now, something to note, there are no um, no IP like symbols. So we have the symbols here. So you see movie reel, movie reel. Movie reel, movie reel, all around, um, all around on a few of these select, but on this first one, we are not um, seeing a movie. So, indicating to me, this is an original, and for me, it definitely speaks to, and I have a comment here, for those who don't know, this is a quote from La Llorona in Hollywood, um, so my thinking is we could see something along those lines of sort of Latin American horror, not saying it's going to be La Llorona, it could be a anything. It can literally be anything. And I think that's what happened last year, right? Thinking about last year in Hollywood. We had La Lechuza on the map for so long. And then it ended up becoming monstrous. So maybe we see something where maybe it starts off one way, but it ends up becoming something bigger or something smaller, depending on what what happens. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is interesting here. Um, we got a comment here, Jungle of Doom. Definitely a possibility. I, I'm not. I'm not thinking they're going to go with Jungle of Doom. Jungle of Doom. I do think a jungle themed house or a jungle themed setting maybe could be happening here. I I said that it. I feel like there also could be a possibility of them ta uh, tackling almost like a, a Tomb of the Ancients kind of feel with sort of the the jungle temple. It's very much like Indiana Jones style. I know it was a little different, different mythologies, but. Not saying a direct sequel to Tomb of the Ancients, but the the vibe, the feel of Tomb of the Ancients, because that's what a lot of people said about um, Jungle of Doom when it was being built. Like, oh, this very, looks very Tomb of the Ancients style before it was announced. So we have, um, and we have some, of course, some lore with Jungle of Doom. We have, uh, you know, Oddfellow fighting his skull there. So there's some lore. Maybe if we want to explore before Oddfellow even comes in the picture. Although I think if we're going to be doing Jungle of Doom, I think Oddfellow has to kind of be a part of it because they've rebranded Jungle of Doom. So Jungle of Doom, for those who don't know, was a haunted house from a long, long time ago. I believe it was 13, um, HGN 13. And it was very, very different than what we see in the scare zone. So they rebranded. I think they just completely rebranded the Jungle of Doom. I don't think there's really going to be much connection to that original house. So, um, I think this is this could just be something, something new, something exciting. Um, this one, I could see it happening. I could see them dipping into this world. Let's see. There's some chats here. We'll have to see a temple. Yeah, I think a temple would be great. Like, temple theming would be a lot of fun if we're going more for the South America. But if we're going more for the Central America, I mean, just doing a version of Monstros with different characters, maybe on a bigger scale. Um, you know, obviously, they don't do direct, like, they don't do direct pulls from Hollywood. Like, how... Hollywood has done from Orlando, uh, you know, fairly recently with like Scarecrow. They don't like pull, they won't, I don't think they're going to just pull Monstros and make it a house. I just, I think they might take the style. I mean, they did do Chupacabra the other year, you know, in, two, in uh, 2022, they did the Chupacabra house. So that one could be, um, and something that I, I did not mention in either the stream or the video, it's something I wanted to talk about here, just to kind of keep this in mind that. We have, so 
the idea right that a lot of these houses have very distinct visions. So for those who are involved with Orlando's event, um, you may know names like Charles Gray, Laura Sauls, these, these big names in sort of the creative art and design team. Well, recently we saw that uh, we have a new name. Um, well, not a new name in the, in the event, but as a show director, um, Ramon Paradoa. I'm going to put it in the chat. He's on Twitter. If you haven't followed, um, he's, he's great. He does a lot of, he did a lot for Chupacabra. He did some stuff for Darkest Deal in terms of like building the lore for that house, four pieces of it. And he recently posted about becoming a show director. So it makes me think, do we see his maybe emphasis on, on Latin American horror possibly come in a feature house? Not trying to say anything specific, but I'm just saying we have voices in here and I'm speaking as a Hispanic person. Um, that I'm excited to see if this goes anywhere. That was just a little nugget. It wasn't necessarily saying one way or the other, and I don't want to drag any any names in here um, for any reason. But it's just 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 keep it in mind. Keep it in mind um, that we could be seeing him. Maybe not this year, but maybe something in the future. Definitely keep that I keep that in mind for maybe some some voices, new voices coming into the fold in the future. So I'm going to go back to a chat up here. Right here. There we go. Another chemo dog chat. What did you discuss with the skull with fangs? So moving away from that, we're going to Soundstage 22 and the first IP on this list. Um, and this is a skull of fangs, as you can see. And I, there have been a few theories. For one... This is the closest thing we can identify with the classic monsters. Now, the classic monsters are a mainstay at the event. And, uh, of course, you think fangs, you think Dracula. And I think I think this could be something. We haven't seen Dracula in his own house, like, as a Dracula house. Not as Legends Collide, not as Universal Monsters, where he's there for a little bit. Maybe since Untold, Dracula Untold? Maybe was the last time we saw a Dracula, like a vamp, non -va non vamp vampire house, like a like a you know Dracula, Count Dracula house. So maybe we see that again. Maybe this indicates like maybe the Wolfman. I know there's another icon here that might indicate Wolfman, but I think this one maybe something monsters related. Maybe not just Dracula specific, but maybe something um, monsters at large. But also. Um, my theory that I said in the video was that about um, the new film Abigail, um, the new release movie that I um, I feel like kind of flew under the radar. Maybe when it came out, it was kind of in a weird spot. But, uh, you know, this film's got a bunch of big stars. Catherine Newton from uh, Lisa Frankenstein most recently, but also from Freaky, who's also been at the event before. Um, Melissa Barrera from Scream, um, the Radio Silence team from Scream and from Ready or Not. It, it's got that big vibe. It's got a great setting. It's inside this mansion, inside this manor, this house, um, and Dracula's daughter. Dracula's daughter. It's kind of the, the the concept. This little girl who's a vampire. All these people are trapped in there, and she's going around killing people. So I think that they could be a fun haunted house here. And um, I think with the Exorcist, conveniently also in this location, um, being a house about you know crazy little girls coming after <laughs> coming after you, I think they can make that scary. I don't think that it's too like too far fetched, you know. Um, so that was my chaos theory. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. But I think that it it is a fun a fun theory. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to this comment first. I hope Abigail is as good as it looks to be. I think so too. I, I I have a lot of high hope for it because the, the cast is great. John Carlo Esposito also in this film, um, and uh, it looks like just a fun movie. Doesn't maybe take itself super seriously, but not like a straight up comedy. Like this isn't maybe Renfield level of like action and and sort of special effects. Like this is like I feel like a deeper horror film at its core, but has some some less serious elements. So I'm going to talk about this comment right here. Their IP, despite being originals. Now, this is a debate. I feel like there, there is a debate here on what 
the Universal Monsters houses are. Are they IPs? Are they originals? I want everyone in here to put in the chat what they think about the Universal Monsters houses. Could they be IPs? Could they be originals? I think that they personally are IPs. I think they are IPs because they use the Universal Monster branding um, as the way to kind of market this, um, the, the market them. But they are originals in terms of the story. Um, but they are strictly using the films as the basis for um, for these movies or for these houses. For example, I know Frankenstein versus Wolfman used a lot of sort of uh, and, and, and monsters in Hollywood both used posters and and stuff from the movies, and also Bride of Frankenstein using clips from the film as to literally say this is a continuation of this movie. Yes, they are original stories, but I think they I think that they are IP Universal markets them like IP, even though they don't like to market them that much, which really makes me sad. Um, unless there's like unless it's really nothing else to market. Like for example, um in both 30 and 31, the IP list was not super big. Like it wasn't like, you know, we had a couple big IPs, but that was they were using that kind of like as an end, say, okay, here's another IP. But last year, again, monsters nowhere to be found pretty much anywhere. Um, even though it was a pretty fan favorite house, I would say. So I think they're IP. We've got some IPs in the chat, so I think I think that they're IP. But I just wanted to I wanted to make a point of that um, because I think that this is a really interesting comment in that regard. Okay, so let's go back to let's go back to this. Let's go back to the map, and uh, let's let's talk about yeah Universal is doing the five five rule. Yeah, on here especially, right? We see one, two, you know, three, four, and five. Sorry, I didn't see the unknown. I, I was looking for film reels, and I missed that there was an unknown IP. Um, so, yeah, five and five, that seems to be what they want to do. It seems to be what they they are looking to do, and, and I'm not surprised because it's, it's an even split. And especially if they do maybe a IP scare zone, I would love them to do an IP scare zone. They haven't done one in such a long time. Um, I think it's literally been since... 30, 30 technically with Crypt TV, but really 29, I think, was the last big IP scare zone with Rob Zombie and Zombieland. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's move away from here going up to the Cadillac. And everybody, everybody's got opinions on the Cadillac. Um, everybody, everybody's talking about the Cadillac and who is driving it, um, and uh, how that may pertain to Horror Nights and just the park in general. Um, so of course I've talked about this in multiple videos, the fact that it looks like we could be getting Ghostbusters back because of this Cadillac, um, being, being here and, um, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm interested. I'm interested to see where they take it. Would they do the new movies? Would they do the originals? Um, would they mix them would they try something like an ip original i don't know if they would because it's a third party but universal's done weird things with that so i'm thinking looking back at the cadillac and looking at film reel 23b would be a i think a really great location for this because this is the this uh for those who don't know is what i consider the marquee location of the event um nowadays especially we had Stranger Things here last year. We had uh, Halloween there the year before. We had Texas Chainsaw Massacre there last year. So we've had big houses here in recent years, and it's got a lot of queue space. You would need that definitely for Ghostbusters because Ghostbusters will be one of, if not the most popular event or house at this event if this were all to be what we're thinking it is. Unless there's a big surprise IP, I think Ghostbusters will be the most popular thing if it does happen. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious, um, would I be excited for Ghostbusters? Yeah, for sure. I didn't see the last Ghostbusters. So I know a lot of people did and they wanted to come back, but, um, but yeah, popping this comment up here. Um, I love the do frozen empire. I think the atmosphere of like winter's night or demons pier because of the snow would be, I think it'd be great. Um, honestly, I think, uh, another comment here. We all need a nice cold house. Yes. Um, what was the one last year? Was it Yeti? That was like ridiculously cold. It's usually those houses up there that are always so cold. Or in the year before, Devon's Pure, yes, but 
Blumhouse was freezing in there. They had the a- AC pumped all the way up. Um, so that's great. I love I love when they do that because it is hot in Florida. It's hot. It's humid. Give us some AC at least for like four or five minutes <laughs> while we're walking through a house. Um, so yeah, I think Frozen Empire could be great for the theming. Could be great for the atmosphere. Could be something new, new, fresh. Um, yeah. Well, I see Frozen Empire. Um, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll probably watch it at some point um, before the event if this does make its way there. Um, I'm curious to see it. I want to see what the kind of initial perception is of it because I know, I know the last film, like the last one, was good. I think Afterlife was good. It was a fun kind of return, but this one is definitely more on the I feel like the nostalgia button. They're hitting. They're saying, "Here's Bill Murray. Here's." Um, you know, here is the original Ghostbusters, Dan Aykroyd and, and Slimer and, and all this stuff. We're like bringing it all back. So, you know, um, I think it could be fun. Um, yeah, if they announce it, I'll watch. But, well, it, it, that, this was what was great about Chucky. When they announced that, I started watching the show and I was able to finish it by the time Halloween Hornets. I mean, probably way before the Halloween Hornets came out um, and had the house. So and I love that show now. Like I, I'm, I'm ready for season three to um, the second half of that to come. But um, I think that if they were to announce this, I think if they were to be announcing it, Reese, like a soon announcement, like maybe a drop a. Oh, I don't know if my internet's good. I don't. It says the connection's fairly good. Okay, I don't know if it kept dipping. Um, but yeah, if they were to announce it fairly soon, I think it could be good. But. Um, I wouldn't wait too long on it. Either either try to hit it when it comes out or hit it when it comes on to home release and streaming. Um, either way. Now, this comment here, a frozen ecto cooler. Now, I I like where your mind's at. I like where your head's at. Um, with this. I, I think that I think that the frozen um like, I think you could do so much with food and drink and all, all that stuff. Food, drink, everything with with, with, with uh, Ecto Cooler. Or just in general. I mean, and Ghostbusters is like Stranger Things where they love to merchandise that, that IP. They will put merch out for everything. Especially nowadays. Because it's a little different than, you know, the merch landscape is a little different than 2019. Even though they went pretty hard. Um, they can go even harder on the merch and food and making sure you know there is Ghostbusters at the event and not just in the house. It's based on Frozen Empire. I wouldn't be surprised if they make an announcement right now. And if it's based on Ghostbusters, how do you improve upon an already amazing house? That's kind of my thing. Is like I feel like the house – I feel like from what I've seen, they kind of just nailed the, the movie, the original. And I think it might be almost like a Halloween situation where you're back, back treading – like you, like you're you're um, backtracking on on a house that already was a great fan favorite house, and sometimes that's not sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes it's not worth it. You just gotta just try something different, let it be its own thing, and if it if it does good, it does good. Um, but it's like let it and, and it'll be successful. It'll it'll draw people in. Will it be a good house? But yeah. What was that location's name? Uh, if you're talking about 23B, so Soundstage 23B, so this would be 23A is over here where Minion uh, Minion Mayhem is, and 23B is over here, and they share the Soundstage. It's one of the older locations, um, but one of those big, big locations that people love. Always ha- has pretty good houses in there. Um, so... Yeah. Um, what do we see? Um, wouldn't see Chucky show without HHN and it's not one of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I probably would agree with you. Um, I probably would have been like, yeah, it's fine. I'll watch it, but it's not like, you know, whatever. um, the dessert name. Um, we were talking about Ecto Cooler. So I don't know if that was Ecto Cooler. I mean, they brought it back a few times. I don't know if that's, Snore. Um, a few chats here. I'm I'm kind of behind on chats honestly because I was just rambling about. Um. Oh, deserving. Okay, coding for the house. Oh, 
I, I honestly, I completely forgot those code names. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, um, but yes, the code name. Uh, the, the, I won't say the code name for this house is S'more, but I do think that S'more could be something. But I just, I feel like that's kind of on the nose. I don't know. This, this sue me, but I think that's kind of on the nose. I don't know if they want it to be that on the nose. Um, because you know, Universal is kind of weird with speculation. So why would they make it so obvious? You know, like as to be like, oh yeah, obviously it's 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 a marshmallow. It's s'more. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Universal, like like s'more would have been would could be a totally other thing. Like, I mean. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think personally. It's like when I remember when people were talking about FNAF, and it was like pe- pie for pizza pie, and it's like a lot of these are totally less, like less related than you think. But I do think, like, I do think there. I want to see where the code names go, and I know they really only tell you on the, um, the only um, on the MS and the horror tours because they told us last year, and I like that they how they did for. I, I want to say it was fruits and vegetables, and Oddfellow was a tomato. And what did they say? I don't remember what they said, but I feel like my my own head cannon was more relevant than like it felt like it made more sense than what they said because I thought tomato. What do you do when you see a bad show, which is what the circus is? You throw tomatoes at the stage, you know. So it's like that's where my head went tomato, and I, I think I was thinking too way way too deep into it because they said like, um, it's because it's like odd it's an odd fruit and it's not meant to be like it's not a fruit whatever they said and i was like i kind of like my my reasoning better i feel like I, that would have been a, a little more would have been a little made a little more sense um um pair for last of us yeah they did they did yeah because it was like that one i want to say they did peach for yeti because it was fuzzy I don't remember. I don't remember specifically, um, but let's see what the actual names are. Four of these, um, and uh, four of these, and we can talk about what they could be. I don't. I don't. I'll pull up. A, I'll pull up a list in a little bit. But um, yeah. Okay. Um, this one's Mike Flanagan. I don't think Mike Flanagan's going to come to the event, but I think uh, this would be a fun. It would be a funny one. I feel like this would be a funny. And I want to say I said flan could be have to do with the little little continent over there on the left, because correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it of this origin of any? I, I don't know where flan specifically comes from, but I don't know if that's Spain or if that is Latin America that it comes from. But keep in mind that one. Um, back to like builder, I'm kind of new to examining spec maps. Where's the information coming from and who's creating the symbols? So it's coming from, and, and they, they're pretty clear about this. Let me, let me pull this up. So it, so they put out this sort of disclaimer and, um, and it basically saying like, we get kind of information from everywhere, like whether it's maybe an insider, maybe just general rumors, what we think, like it, it's kind of, it's coming from all different areas. So it's not necessarily just just nightmare specifically, but it's coming from a different, a few different areas. Like the, some of these were already rumors before nightmares dropped the map. Um, like Ghostbusters was one. So I, I think that it, um, yeah, it kind of comes from everywhere. And then the symbols, I think it's them more creating the symbols and kind of like being a little less direct than they have been in the past. Um, but um, but yeah. So that's to kind of answer your question. Yes, it's kind of it's them, but it's also from other places too. Okay, let me get back up on my squeaky chair. Um, going back to Harry. Also, welcome Harry. I know you you just kind of joined into the in the stream. Hoping the moon one has something to do with werewolves. I don't remember having a good werewolf house since American Werewolf in London. Okay, we can pivot to the moon. Um, uh, yeah, and there's another one. So here we go. We have werewolf. Le- uh, Lee went. I'm so I'm so embarrassed. Lee Wanell, Lee, Lee Wanell. Am I pronouncing that right? The the director of the Invisible Man is doing a Wolfman movie, um, and uh, so with Blumhouse, who had a thing, you know, go to Halloween Horror Nights. They said that, um, so maybe that's their appearance. So I think so. But then let's pop open this one. 
the moon and stars spec to be Nightmare on Elm Street. Was the symbol here was featured in the Dreamwalker house in 2007, which was the last Solo Freddy house. I believe the first and only Solo Freddy house. So, what do we what do we make of this? I think either could be. I think. I feel like this is also a little on the nose. There's another symbol here that is pretty on the nose too. Um, but I think Wolfman, I think Wolfman would be, would be one that I would want, but Freddy is not a bad pick. Honestly, like Freddy's not a bad pick um, because I, I, and I'm not the biggest Freddy fan. I've said this in the last stream. I'm not the biggest Freddy fan in the world. I think he's cool. And I think the movies are great, but yeah, Freddy got brought up last stream. Yeah. So it's like, Yes, I think Freddy is um, a great character, and I think it could be a lot of fun as a house. It's um, one that I'm very curious about if it would actually happen. That is another one that I'm like, will this actually happen? Because it is a it is a um, you know third party. It is New Line, and that is a you know Freddy's been weird with rights in the past. So I'm a little skeptical, but I do think we could. I would say, and I and I should say this. All the time, I say it every, in all the videos, but I should have said it here. Don't get married to any of these ideas. All of these could change. None of them can change. Some of them can change. It it, it really doesn't matter. It's early. It we don't really know a whole lot. There are a couple things here that are like, yeah, it would make sense if these things came and came back, like some of the shows and stuff. But like, don't like put a whole lot of stake into one thing or the other and say, Oh my God, Freddie's coming. Oh my God. I have to have Freddie. And if Freddie doesn't come, I'm not going to come. Then, you know, don't be heartbroken. If it turns out that Freddie was never planned to come in the first place. And it was just a rumor. Um, so just keeping that out there, let's get back to Freddie. Um, because it will be the house nostalgic horror house, um, of that year. Yeah, I think it could be do it exactly how you did been doing the the slasher houses in recent years. I know a lot of people did not like that Halloween house or maybe thought it was kind of mid. Um, as far as a retelling of the movie, I think it does a pretty decent job in telling ever, all the big scenes. You get Jason's first kill. You get the outside of him in the clothesline. You get the, you know, uh, going into the the sanitarium, you you get the scene where he's in the closet, like all that stuff. You get the big moments. With this one, maybe they're going back Nightmare on Elm Street's forty years this year. They're going to go back and and go back to that first movie, and or maybe they do something different. Maybe they try something different. They make it a little more like here we have some stuff maybe from Dream Warriors. Maybe we have stuff from um, from Freddy's Revenge or whatever. Like we have a few different movies that we're, we're examining, or some stuff from. The original house from Dreamwalkers or Freddy versus Jason. Um, it, it really could be anything. Um, and it, who knows? It could also just be, it could be Freddy versus Jason. Um, I know Jason's not really mentioned here, but again, stranger things have happened in Halloween Horror Nights, um, quite literally. I'm going to go back here. It is the same symbol. Yes, it was used in that house. Um, anyone have the code name? I don't know what the code name is for that. Um, I don't know if there is a, um, I don't know if. I don't know if there is like specific what specifically it would be. Um, again, I don't have them off the top of my head, but um, yeah, if anybody does, we can talk about that. Um, Backlog builder, I see your comment here about the another symbol. We're gonna we'll get to that in a second when we get back there. But yes, I'm gonna keep your I'm gonna flag I'm gonna star your comment because it is one I want to come back to. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, and this is what I'm saying, and this is why I, I try not to hype things, hype things up crazy, where it's like, there's one on here, if you know me, and if you've seen the video that I get pretty hyped and pretty pretty strong-willed about, I'm, I'm having very strong um, opinions about it, but, um, it you know, it happens, and if, and if you don't see something, you know, if you see something that you like and it goes away, can't be too broken hearted about it. Um, but yeah, I think it would be it would kind of, it would be kind of interesting if they're like, no, no Freddy's. The bear or the nightmare. Yeah, I get neither of them. Um I think one thing you need to take into account is the community share for IPs, meaning who gets top billing. That is true. I mean, looking at Warner Brothers, that Warner Brothers sent 
The Conjuring, and Saw, two of the biggest horror franchises in recent years, to Six Flags. If they have a deal with Six Flags, maybe it was whatever, like they wouldn't have to pay as much or, or whatever, like it would have to be, there would be some kind of financial stipulation. You know, like you never know, or it's, um, usually it's not like, because like Knott's is buying up IPs or anything like that. I think Horror Nights really is the only big haunt that has IPs, but still, like, if let's say if Warner Brothers were to do the event, the, um, what do you call the Horror Made Here event, um, this year, yeah. Um, yes, Harry, there actually is. They saw there was a Saw Haunted House at Fright Fest last year, and um, I know Magic Mountain, I don't know about any of the other Six Flags parks. Um, but they had a Conjuring House and a Saw House, and this weekend is the Scream Break, or maybe this weekend or next weekend, um, is the Scream Break sort of spring break event, haunt event at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Um, they're bringing the Saw House back, so they're planning on keeping that IP around, um, over there. Um, it was cool at Magic Mountain. Um, I've heard I, a, a lot of people love uh, if you, uh, Magic Mountain as a as an event um, or Fright Fest. My bad. Um, but yeah, nothing compared to HHM. But I, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of love for Fright Fest out there, and it, it looks like fun. I mean, it's it's a little smaller scale, but like I mean, if you love The Conjuring, if you're a Conjuring nut, and that's that's what you want to see for sure. Um, I don't care what comes this year. I'll be there. That's all that matters to me. This comment is also getting a star because this comment is exactly how I feel personally. So I understand the, the appeal and I know a lot of y'all are in the exact same boat. I'm excited when whatever gets announced, everything has the potential to be good. Everything has the potential to be disappointing. Your favorite house on the spec map and on the official event map could be your least favorite. I'm trying to think, um, uh, Spirits of the Coven was one of those. I had so hyped. I was so hyped for that house. And it just, it was not my least favorite of that event, but just kind of fell flat in a lot of places for me. Um, and houses that I was not expecting to be as great as they were. Darkest Deal was another example of that. Um, that, wow, I did not expect it to be as amazing as it was um, to me. So yeah, live for the moments, for the memories. And that's why I make the videos for y'all. Just say, I, I, I watch my videos back sometimes. I'm going to admit it. I watched my vlogs back when I was, you know, construction updates and, and whenever the limited time I did vlog at Horror Nights, which I do want to do um, more often this year, um, be in the park a little more and, and, and kind of show that experience so that, I, you know, people can go back and go, oh, my God, this is what this event was like. Um, even though there are a million other vloggers out there, I know for me, no one's going to get my experience but me to, to remember be like, oh, yeah, this happened, this happened, this happened. I remember we put in the video. Um, there's a saw ride in Thorpe Park. I've heard of that ride. I know Expedition Theme Park has done a video on it. Um, and I know, uh, I mean, there are other people I'm sure that have done videos on it. That was just the video that I saw. But yeah, no, it, that's cool. I mean, I know Saw's an IP that's really weird. Like having a ride for a horror film, like a roller coaster, too, it's crazy. Um, let's see. Not Scary Farm doesn't use IPs. Oh, so we're down. We're down we have a few comments here about Knots. Um, I've been going for years, and honestly, I think it's an amazing event. And IPs, no, IPs don't mean really anything. Like, yes, it's great to see our favorite properties come to the event, a any event. Um, to get a haunted house, to get to experience Stranger Things and Chucky and Halloween and and Universal Classic Monsters and all these great horror IPs that we love, but. Nine times out of ten, the IPs do not wow me. My favorite out of my like, I out of on the top of my head, like my top five favorite houses, one is an IP, one, and the rest are originals. And, and that's it. At all the haunts I've been to, even though I'm not super in like to haunt, like I'm not, I haven't been to as many haunts as I would like to. Um, I know we're getting some cinema slasher. I know you've made a comment about this earlier. Cinema slasher looks like a fantastic house. It looks like on the level of like an HHN Orlando original, like in terms of budget and set design and theming and stuff like it looks great. Um, and you know, yeah, they're the OGs. They know what's, and that's why I said, give that seed of the fog, give that back to knots because they are the original pioneers of the fog and the haunt event really. Um, and Orlando, obviously HHN Orlando and Hollywood have, grown it and made it bigger and 
and maybe better, depending on who you ask. But you got to have some love for the originals, of course. I like this comment here. Um, if I was given a chance to know all the houses early, I would want to. Speculation is too much fun. I think that's how I feel. And I think that's we're for you guys, for you get for y'all who are in here, y'all 18 people and, and the people who are in the chat and everything that are in the stream right now, y'all are the ones that are getting my speculations because I I wanna like let this be a communal experience and talking and 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 throwing out concepts and stuff and and I don't I there's a degree of speculation that's that's um, scoopers that are like, I need to be the first one to say whatever this house is going to be. It's not it for me. It's not it for me. This is what makes me feel so connected to the community in so many ways. So yeah, I, I love, we love speculation. Speculation as a concept versus like speculating for all these things for like for attention. Um, lots of comments here about the West Coast. Some flash few of those on the screen. Um, I've never been to the West Coast for haunt season. Um, I want to go. I'm going to try next year. I don't know. Maybe this year if there's a surprise, but I don't think this year. Maybe next year. I would like to go out to the West Coast, do knots and knots and HHN, really. But knots, knots is where I'm at. I've been doing knots deep dive recently. And it's a lot of fun. If you ever get the chance to come to the New England area, what are some good haunts out there um, up in New England? I know. Yeah, I know Hershey Park has one, and that's what Pennsylvania. I don't know if that counts, but um, but that's a, that's one that I've heard good things about. It looks like a lot of fun, um, and um, but I don't know what other haunts are up there that are really good. I know Field of Screams, I believe, is also up there, but yeah, let me know, clarify, what, please, which ones? It's an anniversary of Hollis Grim Tampa. I'm very much Chris. I think we're gonna go. I think we're going to go to Tampa this year because I've, I've been wanting to go to Tampa. Last year was my first year at Hollow Scream Orlando. Going to go back to Hollow Scream Orlando at some point. Um, we're we're going to go back to, to Orlando when when that opens, but definitely for Tampa. I want to see what that's about. Hollow Scream Orlando was a lot of fun last year. Different vibe, but a lot of fun. Dorney Park has one near Allentown. Okay, so Dorney Park has a haunt. Because I'm familiar with Dorney Park as a like a theme park. Um, yeah, if you just leave any, any leave any of these, I'll put them on my bucket list because I know my goal is to experience a lot of the big haunts at some point in the next year, couple years, whatever, um, to experience the big haunts around the country for sure. And Florida's got a lot of haunts, so right now I'm kind of I'm hitting the Florida haunts, right? Hitting HHN, Hell's Cream. Um, we call it House Green Orlando, Tampa, Sir Henry's, all the haunts around Spooky World. That sounds kind of fun. Kenobi Lake Park may have a Halloween event. Okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. If you don't get invited with the media event this year, I'll be bummed. Yeah, your content is amazing. Not many content creators do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That 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 makes me so much. That gives me a lot of joy that you find so much joy in, in this event. Um, and my videos about this event or just events in general. Um, and uh, I really appreciate that. Here we go. Nightmare New England, Fright Kingdom, Haunted Overload. I've never heard of these. That's awesome. I'm starring that. I'm going to star that, and I'm going to go ahead and write these down because I think there's there are a lot of that. Like, these sound wild, but that's awesome. Okay. Um, I want to pivot back to the map a little bit, but if you anybody still wants to leave any anything, like any... any um, Okay, so it's called Nightmare New England. Um, anyone, anyone who want to leave any other haunts and things like that in the future, and also like, because I, I I've been wanting to cover other haunts on the channel. I have plans to cover obviously Hollow Scream. When we get updates, I want to talk about Hollow Scream because that's pretty local to me. Um, but also I do want to talk about like more of the history aspect of things like knots and some of the other haunts because I've just again I've been in a bubble, I've been in a rabbit hole of especially knots watching back walkthroughs and and learning the lore so if y'all uh if y'all have any 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 haunts that you want to see me cover in one way or another um at least from here obviously i probably won't be able to go to these places but at least to cover from here and make some videos about um let me know okay back to the map 
because I know we're already an hour in. Um, and I do want to talk about the rest of these. I don't know if we're going to get to Hollywood, but maybe we will. Um, let's get to, let's go to, let's see. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Harry, for throwing out, uh, throwing out one of these, um, uh, pretty much a way for us to go. Oh, well, Spooky World, I didn't mean to hit that comment, but yes, Spooky World sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but Harry says, Wildcard Theory, Unknown IP is the return of Maxim, Maximum Carnage House from 2002. Where are my sources? Sheer desperation. We've all been there, Harry. Um, as far as the Unknown IP goes, it can be anything. I mean, I don't think it'll be Maximum Carnage, but it could be. It could be Maximum Carnage. Um, and I think that there, there are so many things that it could be. It could be Blumhouse. I know a lot of people have been talking Blumhouse, Imaginary, Megan, Insidious. I don't think it'll be FNAF, but, you know, like a lot of Blumhouse releases, any anything um, recent. Oh, The Purge. Who knows? Like, like, who knows what it could be? But I think Blumhouse is going to go here. Um, but they may not know what Blumhouse movie yet. So, yeah, um, that's my that's my theory. If anybody has any other theories, I don't think it'll be imaginary because it wasn't received well. That's that's a big that's a big part of it, in my opinion. I think it wasn't. I think it just isn't doing too hot. And in general, like they had a lot of build up, a lot of marketing, and I feel bad because the haunt in California, the Chauncey's Imaginary Playhouse. Looked like a lot of fun, and it looked like it could have set up things that you could see in HHN House. Some of the locations, some of the effects, um, the actual like Chauncey bear costume, like looks great. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it maybe yeah no because the last time they really tried to do something like this was I'm thinking Black Phone, and Black Phone was a huge success, and that was a great movie. It's my favorite Blumhouse movie. Um, Black Phone was a huge success, so it was like, okay, and Freaky was fine. Like, it was kind of like, I remember it coming out and people being like, this is cool. Like, it's all right. Like, it's a horror comedy fun. You know, it might not be the biggest movie ever, but um, it, 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 you know, it's cute. It's a cute movie. Um, so I think that maybe they do Imaginary, maybe they don't, maybe they try something else, but who knows? Um not Blumhouse, but I would love, I would have loved to see a different IP in here that we don't, um, we don't have too much of yet. Um, we haven't really talked about, I don't know if y'all are going to, I'm, 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 uh, I'm trying to put, put it on, put something on the screen. Um, put this comment up here. Blumhouse has been mostly hit or miss. For sure. But I think recently they've been trying to do hits. Um, Freaky, I liked it, but didn't love it. Black Phone, Black Phone is a fantastic movie, and I can't wait for the sequel. Very, very curious of what they'll do with it. Um, but um, but no, this, this film, now, let's talk about this one. Do I think it'll come? Probably not. This is a Universal film being released by Universal. Um, I believe focus features in Universal Pictures. So it is being released by Universal. Again, this movie unfortunately did not make any money. Unfortunately, made very, very little in theaters. But I think this one was great, a great vibe. And maybe it's giving me similar vibes to Freaky because of Catherine Newton being in both. But it has that kind of like campy, very campy, but also can be very fun. For something like HHN. Nobody else was there. That's so sad. That is so sad. That is so sad. I'm sorry for that. Because it, like this is this was such a fun movie. Um, but anyway, gonna gonna pull the map back up. But I think I think it could have been could have been a lot of fun if they would have done it for Horror Nights. Because I think it's just it's one of those IPs that feels like a Horror Nights IP. Um, but what do you think Classic Monsters House will be this year? Kind of like talking about Frankenstein. Jumping back to Monsters. Um, I don't know if you were here earlier, Judge Wolf, but we did talk about the Soundstage 22 being potentially Dracula, for Sprungtown 4 being potentially Wolfman, or Soundstage 22 just being, um, what do you call it? Um, 
monsters at large, just in general. We don't know what monster yet, but maybe something along the lines. I think Dracula. I think Dracula is a close one. Dracula and Wolfman, I think, are both good picks because the mummy and Frankenstein's monster, they kind of did that quite a bit. Like they already kind of used those themes, but you know, doing the castle and the dark forest is something they haven't really done in Monsters House yet. Wolfman could be very scary if they played their cards right. Um, or I think Dracula just has a lot for, for theming though. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, and I, and this is very much rumor territory, so I'm not gonna just kind of talking about this in general. Um, this is the idea of potentially Fast and Furious closing. I don't know much about that, so I can't really say whether I think whether I think it's gonna happen. But I don't think it'll affect. I don't think it'll affect this uh, location here. I think this location is regardless because if they close it, I don't. I think it'll be almost like a Fear Factor situation where. They leave it. I don't think they're going to close it permanently and start demoing it. If they close it, it'll be for some kind of something, maybe an extended closure, or they're figuring out what they want to do with it if that does happen. But I don't think that it'll mean the IP, like the location for Horror Nights is gone because it really only uses a small part of the queue. And um, I mean, the queue for the queue, right? Like the actual line. But it only uses a small part of small part of the queue for the house and then um, the 10 outside. So like, it doesn't do, it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, like in terms of like, it's not really affecting it. I'm going to go, I'm going to go pop this on here. Chris saying, make it a heat round hot. Um, I think that it could be, oh, shoot. Um, I think it could be a great, a great year round hot. Um, Bring the House of Horrors, like do something like that. I mean, I wonder how that will be, especially when the Vegas opens. What's the state of the year-round haunt in that way? But I don't know. I don't know. That's there's a lot of curiosity that comes with that one. House of Horrors, such a great house, such a great house, fantastic. It's such a great idea, like in general. Maybe they like I feel like they could do it a lot better now. Also, going to going to do this right here. Um I yeah, um I think House of Horrors could be a lot of fun when it comes to just making a fun HHN house that does a lot of things can do a lot of things right and sort of like update that, that concept. Right. Um, I was going to show something and I'm trying to find it. Um, I can't find it right now. I'll have to find it in a bit. Um, but let me go back to the comments. Here, let's go back to the chats. Um, yeah, so let's move to another. Let's move, I guess, I guess unknown IP. Keep that in mind. Blumhouse could be one. Um, could be could be something. Let's move actually back like builder. Thank you for pivoting us in one way. I just noticed the Castle Scare Zone has a film reel attached to a meeting IP. What the heck could that be? So this actually um backlog builder it indicates this is a show, not a scare zone. Um, because it's in purple, Nightmare Fuel, or what we think is Nightmare Fuel, probably Nightmare Fuel, back here by Fear Factor. This is indicating in the Animal Actor stage for um, for the castle. So what what do we do here? Um, what do we do with the castle? Do we do we, we could do a whole lot of things? And one of the popular, the very popular options involves someone we have seen before uh someone we've seen before in a show we've seen before and maybe we see them come back in a come capacity something we haven't really talked about yet um for those who know you know but for those who don't i am going to show you History of Halloween Horror Nights. 
There has never been a creature more terrifying, more horrifying. From the darkest depths beyond the grave, it's showtime! It's a ghoulish haunted house featuring the ghosts with the most. Beetlejuice. Now, not a house, but a return to the graveyard review. Now, what could this mean? What could this be? That's the question here. Could this be a, a return to the graveyard review? I don't think so. Um, but this is a, an IP property that a lot of people have talked about. Maybe this has to do with the unknown. Maybe this has to do with this. Maybe this has to do with uh, with this little bug over here in Hollywood. Maybe this has to do with a lot of things. Um, you know, I don't consider it too far out of the question because this is someone we've seen before. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I don't think this is, I know that's a popular theory. Um, I know popular theory is also, I want to say I've heard some talk about Rocky Horror Picture Show. I don't think so either. Now there is, um, yeah, maybe a take on this. Uh, yeah, I just don't, I don't know. I, I just wanted to show that because I wanted to first of all, test the video feature. So if y'all got to see it, congrats, but I don't know. Um, yeah, like them doing, yeah, the, the sequel is coming out this year for Beetlejuice. So maybe we see a Beetlejuice to something. Could it be connected to the icon of this year? And that's a whole nother thing. Um, so one second, I got to run for one second, but I will let y'all talk about yourself about the icon because that could be really interesting. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, just had somebody come to the door for some reason, and it's a little alarming when it's eight o'clock at night. But you know, whatever. Um, but okay, let's let's go back to some icons. So okay, let, let's go back to Beetlejuice. Um, Beetlejuice. Do we think so? Do we not think so? I don't think so. But I think this castle show has a lot of really interesting ideas, a lot of interesting concepts. That could be, I've heard of um, potential of of another IP that that uh, I want to see what y'all think about it because I, I know this is kind of a new a new one that um, a new one that people have a very very divisive on. Yeah. Um what? That <laughs> like like I mean I'm not going to say this is happening, but, huh? Oh, okay, Chris, you have a good idea. This is a good idea here. Give us a late night Beetlejuice talk show. Give us this Beetlejuice doing the horror makeup show. Like, have the horror makeup show be overrun. They did it during COVID, but do another version of this. But what? Harold and Kumar, like, and this is, goes back to what I think about this whole thing in general and where why I wanted to talk about I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to a comment that I got a while ago. I'm I, I got a comment a while ago about this back in the beginning of the stream. Back to the map. 
Um, and this is, it was about the lagoon and it was about the, the idea of whether the lagoon is going to be used for a show. Now this is over here in animal actors theater. Um, and for those who don't know, animal actors theater, I never heard of this movie. Yeah. Talking about Harold and Kumar. Yeah. Um, but the lagoon, um, the lagoon is something that they've been working on, but animal actors is such a wild concept to put a show right here because if you're looking at the map here, unknown scare zone, boom, right here, boom, big house, potentially a big IP house right here, boom, on either end. Plus, they don't note this, but there are usually food booths up here, up here on the other side, in front, um, on the other side of the lagoon, like sort of stage. So, why? What would make the sense of putting? And they use the animal actors sort of queue area for also a, a food booth. They did it last year. They've been doing it for Mardi Gras. They're probably going to want to do it again this year, because with Kid Zone closed, they can't use all of that for HHM food booths. So that knocks out what two food booths they're going to move other places. So why would you put something here in the animal actors theater that is going to really conflict with all these, this crowd flow that's going every which way chaos. We see what happens with nightmare fuel. And even though I think the lagoon show coming back would be great, I think it would be great because look at how much room you have here, first of all. And yeah, you get the sort of let out like right there by central park. Right. Um, well, Kid Zone is opening again this summer, but will they be doing HHN stuff? And that's the question that I don't I don't think they will. I think they're actually I think they're gonna do like almost like what they did with minions, where they're not gonna put it maybe directly, or at least they're not gonna build food booths in the brand new kids playground area. You know, like because those because those you know, for those who remember from before it was closed, the food booth sat kind of there's one here in the center. Right in this sort of like central plaza in front of animal actors. That was a Beetlejuice one, I believe, a few years back. And they had one to two kind of along the way as you walk back to Pizza Fries, which is also back there. So I feel like this area is just kind of I, I'm I'm kind of docking it from the list of anything that could be happening. They could surprise me. They could add stuff back here, but I think for now we're we're not gonna see this area. This is just in my opinion. So I think this this area back here. And this whole area in the whole back of the park, in my opinion, is just going to be really wild this year. But, like, putting a show in the lagoon, I feel like, would just make more sense. Because I feel like you can hold more people. And I feel like the lagoon show has a lot more of an appeal, in my opinion, than, you know, Harold and Kumar. Or, you know, going back to this comment, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, Rocky Horror more than Harold and Kumar, for sure. But I think, having the, like, using the sort of lagoon show, Nightmare Fuel format maybe with some extra additions like roaming horde or um the death eaters things like that in addition to the five scare zones and ten houses that are already kind of set in place having this extra entertainment they need a second show putting this coming back up here they need need a second show i even advocate for a third show um preferably if it was me um i would say in horror makeup but i think animal actors I, I don't love that location, but I think horror makeup could be a good location for it. But they need, regardless of where it is, they just need a second show um, or a third show even because last year we felt it. And I think that's was part of the reason that people don't really talk about. Um, they, they, they <laughs> fourth show, let's have a show everywhere, show around every corner, born show building. I know that's, that's one that's been talked about. Whoa. Um, that's one that's been talked about. Um here it's like put put you know move it back here like i don't know i feel like they just need more than just one show because we really felt that last year we really felt the lack of a second show and it affected the crowd flow in the houses and the zones and when you just have people that are like okay well we don't want to wait in line for a house but we want to do something so we're going to go into a scare zone we're just going to hang out we're going to go into a food line for less food booths than what we had originally. So anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox with that one. Um, but yes, shows break of crowds. If you weren't in line for two hours, you weren't seeing Nightmare Fuel. 
I think that's what it what it does is it's like th this idea of like even if people maybe don't care about the show necessarily, like I know a lot of people love my Nightmare Fuel, and there's plenty of people like myself see it and they're like, oh wow, this was actually really cool. I'm surprised. I'm not saying I was I, I kind of knew about the show beforehand, but like you know, nothing compares to actually seeing it in real life. Um, so getting an extra experience to kind of put on your list to say, okay, we did houses and we saw this really cool show. Um, Horror Nights Entertainment and the shows have always been such an important part. Putting up this comment here, talking about, you know, our friends, the Wild Stallions, right? Like that's such a big part of the of the, um, of the the event, the event's history. So many people miss that show. And I think this, I don't see Harold and Kumar out of the question completely because of David S. Pumpkins appearing at the event last year and them really having a success of with that out of nowhere. But also I don't, I, I don't believe Harold and Kumar is owned by Universal. That's another New Line Cinema um, project. So I don't know why. Maybe it was a package deal. Like they get, you know, you get Freddy or you get this and and you get Harold and Kumar. You got to put them in a show. Um, but yeah. Um, let's go back to this comment. Does anyone else think HGN hasn't really had an year of identity since COVID? It seems like it's a random collection of houses and everything feels disjointed. It seems like HGN has lost some sense of itself. And I remember 2019 being the year of the 80s and 2018 being the year of the 80s. So I think I think 31, and this is my personal opinion, out of the two years that I've been and being around for 30 and like kind of seeing the event and seeing, I mean, I, I was in the park at the time, like seeing the tribute store, seeing the, the scare zones and stuff. I think that 31 was the strongest year in that because they literally, they had, I mean, they didn't do it perfect. But they had the the pumpkin lore. They had the the traditional Halloween, the tribute store, and the merch, and the food in the houses. I mean, Spirits of the Coven were witches. Uh, Conjure the Dark were witches. We had scarecrows. We had ghosts in graveyard. We had you know trick or treat and like trick or treating kids in the New York Zone. So I think that they they did Halloween and they did it made it like this and they did the the film Halloween, which also is very like traditional and classic. So it's like. That was that felt like such a like a very focused year. Last year, it just felt like it was like you know, and they had Oddfellow, and that was fantastic. And I love Oddfellow. I love Oddfellow, and I wish they would have just done more with him. Um, I wish they would have done more with um with Oddfellow than they did with with Oddfellow, just because I I love that character, and I, I you know obviously y'all who were here from the beginning of last year saw my journey and learning and and appreciating that character and really diving into the the story behind it. So it, it feels like they're, and they're in this weird state because of it just keeps changing. The event keeps changing um, all around, like both in Hollywood and Orlando with all the construction that's going on in the park right now. Every year there's a new project that's closing off some kind of some kind of area that's closing off some kind of thing. Or, or are we having, you know, sort of vision changes? And, and it's, it's a transitional period. Is it the worst transitional period, you know, compared to something like The Walking Dead? the early IP years, I would say no, but it is still a transitional period. So just something to think about for me, my perspective perspective. Thank you. The odd fellow stuff is how I find you. That's, that's how a lot of people I know found me. And I know that's, that's why I was like, I had such a draw to that character because I felt like I, my, my identity partially as like a creator, like being like the, like, like a research agent and researcher and stuff is like, was out fellow for such a long time, and and and, I, and I'm glad that you um, you you found me through it. I'm gonna go back. Um, oh, there's a few sweet comments here. Before we go back, I feel like Beckner took over the icon when it was Oddfellows here. Yeah, I mean, I just think the IPs always tend to do that. Uh, Stranger Things and Last of Us were huge, and plus Chucky and like them being these iconic characters that we know from outside of Horror Nights, you know. Um, I, I think it just was going to happen regardless of what they did with Oddfellow, but I think they what in the spaces they could have done, I think they could have done a little better personally, but I, I do enjoy what they did. Like, I don't hate any of the houses. I don't hate any of the scare zones. I liked everything. I, I, I did coming out and enjoying everything, but I think there are places that like, if it were, if I were to say, do it again, there are different changes that could be made. I think in, in all the scare zones and all the, all the houses and, and all that stuff. So that's just my opinion. Um, 
new icon. So if we get a new icon, yeah, that's 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 something I, I would I would also um, appreciate doing more uh, doing more icon stuff in the future. And I think maybe this unknown original here could be an icon house. Maybe um, I you know I should say an icon house could be coming. Um, it seems like they are in the direction of doing more icons every single year. So maybe, but I, I'm not going to hold my breath for that necessarily. But I would w wouldn't be surprised. If, let's just say that one. Um, this is the last HTML before Epic opens, so I wonder how much the event will change after 33. Yeah, I think just crowd-wise. I think crowd-wise um, and building up to whatever they have planned for anniversary year, um, I think could be just such an interesting... It's going to be interesting to watch. It's going to be an interesting time, and now's, I think, the time to get on and to experience a lot of the event as it exists, as it existed for a long time. I mean, looking at this map here with four sprung tents and no parade buildings, like... You know, things are changing every year. So, you know, that's just what you got to ride with the event one way or another. I know there's some people like I know this comment here, 2006. Um, you know, even riding when with HHN, you've seen HHN through a bunch of different places. So that is uh, that's awesome. Um, my first year, I've said it early in the chat. More recent was 2022 was my first year attending HHN. Following HHN, it was since 2019. Um, that was when I first like kind of figured out what HHN. I mean, I'd always heard of it. I always had friends who went, but like really like following sort of the the news and the, and the, and the not rumors as much, but more just like announcements. It's just Gen thirteen. Yeah, I know, Chris. You've been you've been there since for the director and and all that stuff. And that's awesome. Uh, it's awesome to see all that. Be able to see all the, be able to see these things that people talk about so heavily, like the icons and you know, even like the walking dead years, even though people like constantly dog on them, like you were there for them because I will never know what that was like, you know, for better or for worse. Um, anyway, um, I feel like they're building a new palette of icons to move the old ones. See, my thing is, I don't think they're going to move the old ones at least. No, I don't. I, I don't, because I feel like they just don't like Jack is so popular. Jack is their icon. Like he is Halloween Horror Nights Orlando. Um, because at this at this point, he he was he's been that way really since I mean since the beginning, but especially I'd say since like 2006, 2007. You know, Carnival of Carnage era, moving on into you know 2025, 20, being like he's the main guy. It's not fear. They tried to do that, and then obviously 30, it was all him. So Jack is Jack is. I don't think they're gonna move Jack around, but um. 2022 so also similar that's awesome um 2004 uh so 14 right so you get to see both parks if you're talking H H N orlando i don't know if you're talking H H N orlando or i mean it's it's, it's florida man in the in the uh in the username so i'm guessing orlando but you know i'm just saying maybe hollywood too could be could be hollywood hollywood fan um Orlando. Okay. So yeah, that that's cool to see. Did get to experience both parks? That's awesome. Um, I'm following since HHN 2015. Never been in person. This will be my first year. That's awesome, Harry. I'm so excited for you, for you to come to the event this year. That is amazing because I know you. I know you've always mentioned like wanting to come and wanting to experience the event. So that's awesome that you're getting to finally, finally experience the event. Uh, Colby, Halloween Horror Nights 20 was my first year, so fear. Um, also, I get what you're saying. People talk about the event, but they just seem to be happy there's an event. Yeah, sometimes. I'm not saying criticism can't happen. Obviously, we can all criticize what we like, what we don't like, what we enjoy, but I don't like to just kind of just spread negativity all the time, say everything needs to be changed, everything needs to be fixed. I, I, I want to see them get better. I want to see them do things as the best they can. And I'm, I understand that there's going to be a point where we don't get to, we're not going to have it the same as it was in, in 2003, 2004, 2006, even in 2010, right? We're not going to be able to see that. It's just not going to happen. So it's worth just kind of getting used to a new event, a changing event and a growing event and just kind of being here for that. And if you're not here for that, there are other events for you there. You know, I feel like there are people that definitely HHM, maybe they don't like it as much anymore as other haunts, other things. You know, we talk about knots, Hello scream, other haunts, 
But a lot of the times, and I, Chris and I did talk about this in live stream if you were if you were on that live stream last night. But once people come to Halloween Hornets, a lot of the times they don't they they stick with it. Um, and because it's like an obsession. I know y'all exactly y'all are y'all are it because I mean you're in this live stream right now talking in March about HHN. So you know, that's that that's that's where it's at. I'm gonna take my niece for her first HHN this past year. She's already planning this year. That is awesome. You, you, you know, just kind of kind of to continue doing HHN and spread it around. And I've taken friends and family and gotten people to appreciate me. I had fr- family that definitely liked horror nights but didn't like love it, and then having to listen to me all the time, they're like, oh yeah. Now they're asking me, what's the speculation? What's the news? What's what's going on? I'm like, it's what I like to do. It's what I, so it's, it's what, and it, that's kind of how I got into Horror Nights. I had friends who loved the event, friends who were scare actors at the event, who I went to, uh, went to school with and, and they became scare actors and they were talking about Horror Nights, Horror Nights, Horror Nights. And I was like, okay, I guess eventually I'll go. And then it ended up becoming this. It ended up becoming this. Um, 2017 HGN 30 was my first year. Um, I, uh, I've said it before. I said it earlier in the stream. I'm so jealous. I did not go to HGN 30. I, I wish that's a DeLorean moment. If I can go back to HGN 30, cause so many great houses that year that I would have loved to experience, but you know, it is what it is. Can't regret it. Um, since 2017 though, that's awesome. That was bone. Well, kind of <laughs> a little bit. Um, 27. Um, I think what they need to do is figure out the crowd situation, especially the bottlenecks. Kind of going back to what I'm saying, trying to create as the least amount of bottlenecks as possible. There are going to be some, but maybe trying to move out certain areas, keep keep people in certain traffic, because that's how it is sometimes with the, with the event. I've noticed that, especially recently, that you'll see certain areas super bottlenecked, but also some will be completely dead with nothing going on. And it's like, What's the, what's the metric? Like over here by Men in Black sometimes it's like when there's not a Fear Factor show happening. Um, like over here on the bridge, like, yeah, there's people, but it's not like insane. Um, so I don't know. They had food booths there. Maybe bring one back. Keep it to kind of where people are moving around. <clears throat> um, my, co-workers, my coworkers have to listen to speculation. Uh, yeah. I, friends and family hear about it a lot more than they probably want to. Um so people are saying South America could be a creature. Did you hear South America, Jungle of Doom? We did talk about this a little bit, Colby, in the beginning, but kind of I don't think necessarily it's Jungle of Doom because it has that little IP symbol. Unless this changes, I do think this is um, – I think this has got – I don't know if it's creature just because creature's been so up in the air all around. Like everyone's saying like I, they might not – more on the Hollywood side. Like I know Murdy said like we'd love to do it, but it's just not in the cards. And I necessarily I don't necessarily see a world where we get creature and the Hollywood fans who have been waiting literally since 2018 to get creature don't get creature. You know, that that's just me. Um because I feel like that would be a great dual coast. Obviously, monsters they like to do dual coasts nowadays since uh, since Bride. They've been doing the same, you know, monsters on either coast. But um yeah, I, I don't think I don't think creature happening. It could, it could. I'm not ruling it out, but I just I don't see right now where creature could be happening. And I, I would love it. I would love creature more than more than really any of the other ones. If I if I'm being honest, um, come to Hollywood this year. Unfortunately, I probably won't be able to. I would I would love I would love to come. Home. Trust me, trust me. After going to the regular park during February. I'm just looking. I'm like, man, I would love to go through a house <laughs> on a house through here. I would love to experience this park during HHN, but you know, maybe, maybe next year, maybe this year. I don't know. We'll see. Um, no promises on either one, but uh, yeah, I would love to come to Hollywood. Trust me. Trust me. Um, I think Stranger Things was why the crowd bottlenecks were crazy. Yeah, I think so. I know mean, there's another one here about like Death Eaters two shows spreading out the crowds. I think crowds. Uh, are going to happen. They're going to be inevitable depending, regardless of what IP really they have um, at this point. I mean, even lower IP years are still super busy because the event just gets busier and busier every year because it's just, it's popular. It's horror nights. We, people love it. So I think that, I think that it, it, it could be, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that, I think that it's, um, 
I think it's just going to become like that. But Stranger Things definitely, like Stranger Things, Last of Us, big IPs like that definitely draw more people and it's going to bring more people to those areas. Um, although for me and my experience, maybe it was because I went on a, a decent amount of times. I didn't go on weekend. I didn't have a Saturday. I don't ever get Saturdays in my past because it's so much more expensive. Um, and I, I have the, I have luxury not be able to do that. I know some people can't, like they can only go on certain days, but planning it, I think planning it out, I think is going to be the best thing for you and planning out your night um, in terms of like, do we stay and scream, stay and scream, stay and scream, stay and scream, stay and scream all the time. That's my, that is my number one recommendation. If you have not done it, um, if you haven't seen it, um, I, I, I did a video on stay and scream last year. Um, not a lot of people saw it, but I, I don't really care. But in that video, I was able to do five houses under two hours and I got stuck in a line at the Yeti line was super long. Um, so I cut a public in six houses in two hours, just about like two hours and change in the first two hours of the event. And, and the whole event is eight hours. Yeah. Cause I'll be going from six to two. If you go from open to close and you knock out five houses in two hours that, I mean, you know, like, and I've been able to do more. So stay and scream is going to be a restaurant. Um, but um, I know there's a comment here about Thursday nights in September. Um, I think, Thursday nights, I mean, Thursday nights in general are usually the best, like Wednesday or Thursday um, during the week are the best nights to go, um, especially in September. Who knows what, if it'll be, I mean, it's going to be busy every single night. So I'm saying plan, know that, um, know what you want to do, like know what you want to do. And also know, like, put forth what you want to do the most because it's hard to do everything in one night. Pretty much impossible if you don't have an RIP tour express potentially you can get it done but even if you're talking food tribute store all that if you have if you have more time outside of you know like if you have like another night if you only have one night though i would say make a list of things like once we start obviously getting announcements what do you want to do what houses are top priority is there any food you want to try merch you want to get shows you want to see anything like that like make that a priority because everything will be busy everything will have a line all the time um Got some comments about so five houses with stage coming two hours. Yeah, it's it's pretty much customary. I think if you plan it right, regardless of what you do, like regardless of, I've had times where I wasn't even planning on doing stage scream like that, and I just did it, and it I still ended up getting it through like three or four houses, even if I'm not trying. So, I think if you if you go in with a plan and you go in with a, again if you, um depending obviously on what stage scream and that's not even something I can talk about right now because we don't know anything, but in general, just doing stage scream is going to be your best option. Um, I think in late September and early October, I'll be a bit busy has been solid. Oh yeah. These times are great. Um, late October, November. I mean, yeah, the, the final weekend of the event for me was one of the best weather was a little nicer crowds were a little lower especially after halloween because you know people like we like it but people a lot of like the general public are like okay halloween's over november 1st pull out the christmas decorations halloween is over and uh you know well i'll, I'll take it as far as it goes <laughs> you know whether regardless if it's uh, halloween november 1st second you know like uh, like I'll, i'm all in regardless so yeah th those are definitely definitely times you have an opening weekend I'll be there opening night this year. Of course, I was there. I'm trying to be there opening weekend, like the full weekend. Last year, I didn't do it. Last year, I went Friday and Sunday. Um, I didn't go Saturday because I had it on my pass, but I because I was driving in to and from, and I live about you know an hour away. Um, and I know it's not as far. Like that sounds like very much like okay, buddy, you live an hour away. Like you don't live that far. But for me, driving to and from multiple times and like being able to go and and also managing whatever else was going on in my personal life at the time it's like it it's one of those things where if i were to um i've been i've been considering trying to get a hotel or something and being like let's stay the whole weekend let's make it happen because i do not want to be able to drive to and from universal every single night for that weekend um and i get why people i get why people stay maybe not on site but probably on site because i, I want to see the cabana bay experience i've never done it during hhn um, since, uh, 2019, um, I went opening weekend, bought express and then got a, extremely lucky and ran into some friends from home in line for stain scream. 
That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, I spent opening weekend with Zombie Chris and Losh and uh, and friends. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah, book your hotels now. Um, but yeah, I did. I, I that this is this is a hundred percent. Please be, be sure to book your hotels as soon as those dates gets announced. And if you're buying single night tickets, express anything, buy everything as soon as possible. If you can, if you can swing it right away, do so. But hotels, I feel like hotels and express are definitely the most important things to buy early um, and single tickets. But if you're like me and you're waiting for multi-night, like if you're coming for multiple nights anyway, multi-night's going to be a better option for you. Even if you're just coming for like a week, like a weekend or or a, like a fee trip, like depending on how you do it, a lot of the time multi-night will be a little cheaper um, if you're coming for like I said, like a weekend or a couple days. Um, but if you're if you are only going one night, try to get all those tickets. Lock yourself in there so you be in for four four horror nights this year because uh, ticket prices are well, looks like we're might be getting them soon. Paid off of how much those are going to be this year, but um. Okay, that was weird. My camera started glitching. Um, but, um, yeah, um, hotel price, you just at least put it in there. And even if you, even if you want to move it or whatever, like, like yeah. I mean, Universal's, from what I understand, is pretty, pretty understanding with stuff, especially, like, if you do it enough. Um, okay, so the normal freaking fear is the price of four nights. See, I wonder because okay, the normal freaking fear, yeah, especially this year, probably. So I'm thinking my pass was my pass without express frequent fear, frequent fear, um, plus without express. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name was 269, 270 without express. And each, yeah, it's, it's a, this is the this is the biggest caveat here. It's probably not, probably going to be a little more, but um. But yeah, so I think for me it was like 270. So and every ticket they say it starts at 70 or, or 79.99. That's like a couple Thursdays, I feel like. Because it's more like going up to like 120. Like on some nights goes up to 120. So if it's at 120 night, that's two nights on the frequent fear plus with which is pretty much every night but Saturday. So it's like it's about it's if you if you and I plan on doing videos on this this year i didn't really talk about it much last year like tickets and like what to like how to really book it um last year i didn't really talk about it too much but in relation to this price is because this is the, it's probably gonna be a little expensive as legion of doom is saying um i'll be buying my multi-night ticket asap yeah um those don't drop as early as single night tickets just to clarify for anybody who yeah here we go derek you keep reading my mind um no it's it's not as cut and dry as single night tickets where they drop them in whatever march april these you got to wait until july or august even sometimes um you know, mostly it's july i don't think august they they don't i don't think they push them that far um normally it's like july from what i've seen last year was in july because they did them alongside the stranger things announcement but doing in july whenever like end of july mid-july putting those tickets out because um I'm sure because they're trying to get the see kind of maybe a gauge of like okay what nights are going to be more popular for single night tickets and what have you. Um, maybe that's why they do it in July. If anybody knows why they wait until July to sell them, um, let me know. I'll have to coordinate two separate trips with two. I feel that I feel this whole thing. Like I mean I I'm going. I'm probably going to go by myself. I usually like to go by myself and then I'll meet friends at the park, you know, like, um, instead, but even I would do it by myself, even if I had no friends to me, um, last year I was totally planning on just doing the event by myself, filming it, doing, you know, vlogging and stuff and doing opening weekend. Um, but, uh, it ended up being like, obviously hanging with, hanging with everybody and uh, meeting a lot of people, but, um, yeah, I might be, you know, I'm probably going to be joined by friends and, and family and stuff, um, at points during the season. But if you're, you're, you're going, then you can kind of define if you're the ones that really is doing HHN, you can kind of define everything, which is good. Um, that's yeah, going to HHN alone is the best feeling. Sometimes it is because you get they say never go alone, but alone you get to really like 
do what you want. Do what you want to do. See what you want to see. And you don't have to worry about, oh, I don't want to do this ride. Or, or not ride. I want to want to do this house. I don't want to do this show. I don't, I don't want to wait in this line. And you can kind of do it yourself. Or if you have people that are like, I'm someone who I like to be there on time. Like for Stain Scream, I don't mess around because I know like last year, I know if I was, I knew if I was late, forget it. I'm not going anywhere. You, you know, you're not really getting a whole lot. You're not getting as much time as you can get. And it's like, yeah, it's going to be a little more of a of a thing to like kind of, you know, get out and, and be out there at a, a specific time. Like I like to be out there. I like to get in the stage scream as early as possible. But if you're by yourself, you can make the call and be like, all right, well, I'm going to stage scream right now. Um, and I'm or, or whatever. I'm going what have you stage scream, whatever it will be. Um, yeah, HHN always go alone. Um, you can be as a deck out of lines. It gets yeah, exactly. You can kind of pop her out. Um, yep, this one here, timing stand scream right. You if yeah, if you if you are in a stand scream, that's like especially if it's a low traffic stand scream. Like I remember when I did the best stand scream run I did was not it was in 2022. It was not stand screaming the weekend. It was not stand screaming uh, monsters. I believe that was also a stand scream location. Not Halloween. It was Spirits of the Coven. I did stay in Scream for Spirits of the Coven. Then I came out of, this is 22, so you're coming out of the, the plaza, going back, hitting 24A, 24B, so what, Demon's Spear, Trooper, Cobra, boom, going to the back because the weekend was basically freshly open, boom, hitting the weekend, and then hitting the tents all in like an hour. Um, you can you can do that with a lot of those times. And like you're saying, I mean, Spirits of the Coven, I was maybe the fifth person in there because who, who else is going to go <laughs> Who else is going to go in there? Now, here's this one. Stay in Scream because it makes the house so dark. Yes, I think that that's definitely – that was definitely what I thought about Stranger Things, like seeing it with the lights on uh, during the Unmasking tour because I never did Stranger Things outside of Stay in Scream. Never because I just – I never wanted to wait that line <laughs> like ever. Um, I only did Stranger Things during Stay in Scream. So – that first little bit where you're like getting used to where you're at is like, it's like a shock, but also, also sunglasses are, are going to be your best friend uh, when it comes to stay in scream. Uh, trust me on that one. Been embarrassing with my emotion introduced me to horror films, but that's awesome though. Like that, like that's, it's a debatable parenting decision. I feel that. Um, but that's that's a lot of fun, though, that you're getting to share it with someone who really likes likes the – who's already interested in the event and will have a good time with it. Um, yeah, so talking about Stay and Scream, having multiple times walking fast or slowing down in those huge walks, it could be really anything. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I'm going to go back. Kobe, um, Kobe said this, and I, I know Kobe also had a question about um, – there are people talking about Sprung Tent 3 and that symbol. Um, but going back to what Kobe's saying about the, the merch, I think we're going to get merch, tickets, all that stuff. I don't – maybe maybe this upcoming week, but I, I think really maybe at the very end of the month or beginning of April, I think it, I think that, that time frame we're going to get our little bit of preview merch, maybe a, maybe a shirt, ma magnet. I think they did a mug and a hat. Um, and then doing our t tickets, dates – and stuff. I think we're going to get that. I think that's what's going to be next. Um, and um, I think that's what's going to be the next thing. And that'll come soon. Will we get an announcement? I don't know. Um, maybe we'll get an announcement. I mean, they haven't done that before. It's been a little while since they've done that. Usually the past couple of years, they've been waiting super late to do announcements. I don't know though, because Chucky was announced uh, literally at the end of the event prior. So uh, we, we, you can't really, I think they're trying to make it so that you can't like you can't guess where the next move is going to be. But let's finally go back to the map. We haven't talked about the map in a while. Um, and I want to do these a couple of these last minute um, real quick. Let's talk about the last IP because I do want to talk about these originals real quick. And I know we're already running at two hours. And uh, so um, let's go to the quiet place. Sprung Tent 3, Silent Sound, Quiet Place is rumored here. Now, can you explain why people are hating on Quiet Place becoming a house? I get that they won't say quiet, but they're doing it based on the new movie. Are they? I, I don't know. I don't know this. Um, and there's another one. I know the silence symbol. This is from a long time ago, Backlog. I don't know if you're still in the chat, but 
you 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 commented this a long time ago, and I said I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a pin in this. We're back on it um, because I do want to talk about the quiet place and the the idea that I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm not on board with this one completely. Not in terms of like I don't like it. I like I think it could be really great. I think if they if they were to do it, I just don't see this happening. Um. I don't. I just don't see this this coming to the event. I don't know. I don't know why. I I just. I it's. I feel like it would be such an ambitious ambitious project, and I think if they were to do it, if they were to try it, it could be great. But at the same time, I feel like it also has this this risk of just being like not really working. That like just just not being as good as it could be, being kind of underwhelming. Um, and so I don't know. What do y'all think about a quiet place? Do y'all are y'all interested? I know there were some comments here about Stan Scream. Um, but um I I just uh <laughs> funny comments. Um but yeah, what do y'all think of the quiet place or a quiet place being um potentially for each gen? Um in back here is like the last IP. Um I can see a quiet place happening or Silent Hill. So that's another one that we've talked about or we haven't talked about. I talked about, I don't, did I talk about in the video? I don't think I talked about it in the video. Um, this is a, this is one that I think could be interesting. I, I believe this over Silent Hill personally, or, or I believe this over quiet place personally. I think this would just be a lot easier. Um, okay. Now here we go. Now this one here is one that I, Chris, why didn't we say this in the stream last night? Silence of the Lambs. Now, I've been hearing about Silence of the Lambs for a while, like for a little while. I know some of y'all have commented in my in my videos and my other streams. It's, hey, Silence of the Lambs. Like, should we should we do it? I think that could be great. I think that could work really well. But, and I think it could be an IP a lot of people would have want would want. Is that celebrating a? Is that cel I don't think it's celebrating an anniversary. No, not really. Not an anniversary this year. Um, but 90s in a 90s theme year. Yeah, because Freddy and Ghostbusters would be more 80s if they were to do that. Um, but uh, let's go back to Quiet Place. But I do like I do like Silence of the Lambs idea. But I'm genuinely should lean heavily into the clickers from The Last of Us. I think that, yeah, I, I do wish they would have had like maybe a blackout room, like a short blackout room with uh, like a transition black um hallway kind of like the invisible man hallway but with nothing and just the, the the sound of the clickers i think with sound i'm kind of what i'm kind of getting at here is i think they could really play with sound here and um it's you know i hope they do take the risk you don't know if you don't try it yet yeah, people said that with the weekend oh how are they going to do this as a house people said it with um with um a lot of i mean just in general name your house that's super risky dueling dragons um is one that i think like that the it could have been and i know some people don't like those houses but i think it, overall they were success i think they overall were good at least like good houses like solid even though maybe they might not be a personal thing like i like both of those a lot but i know some people did not connect with those but i think that maybe if they do try it it could be something interesting we got silent hill um that's another one i know a lot of people want that one i kind of in the middle on both um, based off all three movies, I think because of the the new one is a prequel, and they make it clear. And I wonder if they're gonna flash forward. We're gonna see, you know, John Krasinski and everybody. Like, are we gonna see them maybe in the end or whatever? I, I don't know. I don't know how you do that with the sort of the canon. Um, but um, I think it could be interesting. It's a lot like what I'm thinking with Freddy. Like, I wonder how they're gonna do Freddy if they were to do that. Um. It would be very tricky to pull off, but if they make it, that's what I'm saying. If they make it happen, this could be set a precedent for how they can do houses. They've already done sight. They've already done, they do smells all the time, but they already did sight with something like dead exposure or even like a 3D house, right? I know there's a comment up here about 3D houses but all the way back there. Um, Kobe, I know you said something about 3D houses. Um, 3D houses, I think they've done that. They had their moment. I think they could come back, but they've done these things before. They played around with vision. Let's play with hearing. Let's play with sort of that sense and see what we can do um, with sort of the lack of lack of sound. 
Um, because haunted houses are very loud at Horror Nights. So, um, let's see. Okay, this is one. This one, I'm going to put this one with this one. So, we're talking about silent film. Art the Clown, he's, he, you know, he's mute. He doesn't speak. Um, I don't know if I would say 100%, but I do think it's I could be in the running. Um, this one here, I, I love this concept so much. Like, uh, I, I know if you all see my dream map video, I put a, a house concept about like a Lon Chaney inspired house. I think that could be really cool. I don't know what they would do unless this is maybe a nod to like, like Nosferatu or something like like a Nosferatu. Cause I know they're doing the new one, like, uh, kind of like that, but I, I don't know if they would necessarily do that. Um, one that I think. And we talked we talked about it a little bit, but you know, don't say his name three times. Beetlejuice. I'm dropping that one on you. I don't know if that that, that means anything, but I'm just saying. I'm saying we're talking about hints. We're talking about stretches. You know, being quiet, no sound. No, don't say it again. Don't say it three times. Maybe I know y'all talked about Beetlejuice happening potentially. So. Maybe I'll just stop running my mouth on it. But anyway, um, Twister House would be awesome. Now, I, I want to say when the last live stream we talked about this, like a disaster, we talked about disaster and earthquake, but like Twister, I think could be could be fun. I don't think they would do it, but I think it could be a lot of fun if they were to try it. Um, yeah, I think it could be really cool. Dead Exposure is another one on paper that was risky to pay off big time. For sure. And especially when they did the sequel, like that one, I feel like is one of the best received house sequels recently. Like one of those that people talk about all the time. Like Dead Exposure, yes, but also Patient Zero being like this house that really moved, like kept moving that idea forward. So going to this, I really want them to do it as well. And I, I want this to be, I want this to be something interesting. I want there to be a big IP this year that they really try try something new. Ghostbusters, Freddy. Dracula, monsters, they're great. Blumhouse, it's all great. We, I like it. Um, but it's not, it's something that they've all done before. They've done it before or they've done something like it before. So why don't we try something new, something groundbreaking, something exciting? And that's what I'm going to say about that. They could have done that with Last of Us with the sound thing backlog. I think so. Also, welcome back to the chat. Um, play with more sound. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what I was saying. Like play, playing with sound. Yeah. They do, but also like doing it to like doing the lack of it, I think is like more, cause like they do sound stuff, but like doing it as kind of like the main crutch of the house where again, very risky, but it could really, it could, it could be great. Um, okay. Let me move here. Cause again, I do want to, I do, I do have Five originals to talk about. Well, four, because we did kind of talk about the unknown original already. Let's talk about... Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Poseidon's Fury. Poseidon's Fury. And uh, I'm going to use this in reference to the Minotaur down here in Sprung Tent 4, I think. Um, what is this original here? This is This looks like a Minotaur. Minotaur has played a big role in a previous house, Hades Gates of Ruin. Um, at HGN 20. Um, and for those who, who who don't know a lot about that house, um, it was, you know, really just kind of a straight up deep dive into, into the, uh, the Greek mythology concept. Hades, lots of, lots of exciting looking characters, lots of great characters. Um, I know Chris, I don't know if you're still in chat, but, um, a big fan of this house and uh yeah so i think hades could be a sequel to hades could be great um or jumping a spin-off um they had medusa in that house and they had minotaurs in that house so doing something like a greek a really dark take i want to i want a dark house for this one and i think that it goes with besides series like i think it is a little light too lighthearted, a little campy for what i want to see and i think that was kind of the thing with dueling dragons that a lot of people were maybe a little less perceptive on was the idea of it being a little too, a little too high fantasy 
versus being a little darker and scarier. It wasn't the scariest house as it could have been. I was fine with it, but I would want them to do a darker for, if they're going to do like a myths and legends house, like kind of like this version, um, I think it could be one that it, it would have to do something a little darker. So I think Hades, or if they just do again, a spinoff, some form or something we haven't seen yet. Um, and trying something all new and exciting could be uh, all new and, and different could be another risk, another risk they could take. Well, talking about ri uh, risks. Um, uh, do, 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 do. I know there's talks about back rooms and liminal spaces. Um, I think they could be a fun house. I don't know. They, I don't know if they would try it. I feel like they kind of would, would try it, but I don't know if they would try it now. Um, I feel like, this could be something because I feel like it's it's definitely like the wave of horror right now, but um, yeah, sometime in the future I think this could be a lot of fun. Um, Hades looks cool. Hades, Hades, Hades. So we love Hades here. Um, and then uh, Dummy Chris Zante's Inferno could be a cool idea. That is a is actually an interesting one. Um, doing like a, a thing. I I wonder what their hesitation is with using hell. Because I know when they're doing angels and devils and stuff, like they're kind of a little hit or miss with that. Um, like they don't they don't want to venture too far into the religious side, but doing a kind of a take on Dante's Inferno that's not religious necessarily could be interesting as a mythic not a mythic story, but like a piece of like classic fiction that has never has always had like this tangential tie to horror. And that has never really seen anything like that. Like this was, I mean, Hades was a groundbreaking house. It's been like one of the first to really be based on this um, concept. So yeah, maybe that could be uh, something boundary pushing in the future. But for now, let's see some Greek mythology. Let's see some Greek mythology in, in the event. So um, yeah. <clears throat> um, so yeah, back to the map. Um, give me out a house on Artemis. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, this is a, there we go. Artemis is hunting you down. Um, yeah. Uh, Harry's always got jokes. He's always a funny, funny, uh, funny, was funny comment. Okay. Um, any sort of last minute thoughts on Greek mythology before we move to the other? Well, we did talk about the Latin American thing in the beginning. So that leaves us with two more originals. Two that I'm very interested in. Um, I don't want to open up any last minute thoughts on Greek mythology as a house concept. Curse of Pandora's Box. I know you mentioned that in a past comment. Yeah, Curse of Pandora's Box. Um, I think that could be that could be a fun uh, like take if they were to do something like that. Um, I like Pandora's box in Hollywood. Like their kind of style works, but I do like the facade, like the facade and the sort of black light effects does remind me of 3d. So, Oh, <laughs> just kidding. Don't make it 3d. Um, no more 3d houses. That's a very contentious argument. If, if, if Losh was in the, the chat right now, he would be very mad at you. Probably just kidding. Well, there'd be, there'd be discussion. Um, um, Okay, this is this is uh, don't take anybody. <laughs> that's that's funny. Um, okay, have you heard the rumor that FNAF would be a scare zone this year? That I did not. But how do you do that? That is the question because those suits are big and heavy, and how do you move big heavy animatronics around? Like I. I I think that's cool, but I, I don't – I don't know. I, I just don't – unless they're stationary, which why would you even – I mean, I feel like at that point just put it in a house personally. Um, but, yeah, no, I think that's cool. It's a cool concept. that could be great, but I, I'm not on that personally. That, that's my opinion. But um, I think in a house it would be great. Great in a house, but a zone not really as much. Um, Moon and Stars of Freddy, yes. Yeah, so we did talk about Freddy, it being here, possibility of it being uh, being the uh, original or sort of the in-between movies. 
anything like that. So, uh, yeah, Freddy uh, could definitely be could be one. Um, okay, we got some we got some things about uh, about we got a bunch of information here about um, potential. I don't know if there'd be point putting this on here. Um, so this, uh, yeah, just sort of lining up. I'm not going to put this on here for too long because this is a spoiler for some more houses um, that we're going to talk about in a second. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark both of these, um, and I will we'll come back to that. Well, I want to come back to that at the end uh, once we once we get done with the rest of the houses. Um, logistics for HHN uh, for NAF will be a nightmare. Beckton was a mess in terms of costuming, and I th I think that's one of the big issues. I think is because it's it's expensive, it's a pain in the butt getting people in and out of those costumes because you don't want to do them static and animatronics would be so expensive. You don't even understand like the, like big animatronics, even if you just did four and I feel like people would want more than just the four at one point Like you'd want to have them all around. I think that was the big thing with last of us was like, Oh, we only got to see the characters like one time a piece. So it's like, yeah, I think it, I don't, I don't know right now. It doesn't seem like it maybe in the future, but yeah. Um, not Greek mythology, but Chinese mythology, like Sun Yu Kong. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't mean, mean to mispronounce that. If, I, if there's anybody that knows how to say it correctly, please let me know in the chat. But um, yeah, no, I think Chinese mythology would be great. Any kind of Asian Asian uh, lore, mythology, things like that, it it could, could be really fun as a house. And I know they've had um, that a lot in Hollywood. They've had it a little bit in Hollywood, too. Um, so I think it could be fun to, for Orlando to try it. I don't know what the base is necessarily. Like, I don't know if it would be something that might be one and done for them or it could be something super successful. Um, you never know. But, yeah, no, that would be really cool for a house. Um, could we go back to interactive houses similar to what they did a well, house when you're in the sensory building? So you're, you're talking about Terror Mines where they would, um, for those who don't, uh, no um, Terror Mines was in there and they gave, I don't know if it was every, like, first or second like or, or not first second like fourth or fifth person like a a lamp like a like a helmet lamp with a light on the end and that was kind of like the lighting for the house um it was very like you said and very interactive very relevant i think i, I think that's what i think that's what you're um, talking about uh, too crowded yeah i what i'm saying i think in this case it is too it's too busy and it is too much of a liability for them um i think it just it's just too much um Maybe in Vegas, this could be something if they could like maybe pulse a house like, okay, we're going to allow 20 people in at a time, then we can kind of make something fun like that. But I think with Horror Nights in Orlando with the crowds and again, liability, Orlando doesn't can't do nearly as much stuff as I'm sure they want to because of just all the liabilities with the crowds and everything. That's why scare zones here are not that scary in my opinion um, is because of there's always people everywhere. So um, but I but I'm hearing about, you know, killer clowns. Um, I think this, I think yes, but also I don't know. I, I feel like it would be kind of the in between if they want to make it, they don't want to make it cheap, you know, like they want to make it worthwhile, especially if they're doing the movie. Um, and you have big suits, but also these suits from what I understand, are like what, seven feet tall. So if you're trying to make them as close as you can, that that's, that's my thing. I don't think it can't work. I, I think it could work actually a lot. But it would they would just need to put the investment in, or they would need to put the, uh, put the, the thing. So th that's just my opinion. Uh, put the investment, put the time. Maybe not right now. Um, Killer clowns, though, on the topic, um, has a fun interactive buttons. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, Chucky had a, a, a trigger, a big red button he could press, and some smoke came out. So let's do some more. Um, let's do some more stuff like that. Maybe in the future. That's that's small that you can still do. Um, I would love interactive stuff in the scare zones, uh, especially when it comes to like I know going back to knots, then having the lantern, right? That you can interact with stuff around the park. So genius, such a genius idea. But it's like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see. Um, I don't know why they just don't do something like that here. Um, I feel like you could totally do it here, and, and even if it's an upcharge, I feel like people would definitely buy it. I mean, I know those lanterns were super popular in knots, from what I understand. Um, so. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, Sun Wukong. Okay, thank you, thank you, Harry, for uh, for for because I was like I just wanted to make sure I pronounce it correctly. Um, probably an upcharge and experience. Yeah, I feel like it would have to be some kind of extension 
an upcharge or something, and a, a, definitely a capacity controlled um, situation. Um, yeah, so we have these things about drunk people, and we have some, you know, talk about scared just passing out. Yeah, it's just it. <sighs> People are going to be or they're going to be if it's not a dry event. Obviously, there's alcohol um, in both contexts, but it is just, yeah, having to deal with that, such a liability in any regard with everything um, that I think, and I think even, even in Hollywood too, there's some stuff that they can't do that a lot of other haunt events have. Um, so, yeah, that's, I think, why they just can't, like, do... And how do you fix the problem? Here we go. Here's your question about this. If it's dry, man, you lose. I don't see where there's necessarily. I think it's. I think it's kind of just them going. We can do what we can do. We can limit you. We can make the drinks. We can try to price people out, but drunk people are still going to drink. And people love like people come to horror nights not exclusively to drink, but there are a lot of people who do come for drink makes them a little maybe a little less like um scared uh little, you know like a little more courageous but also it's more fun like the atmosphere i don't personally drink so it doesn't matter to me um but i know people that you know go there and like to drink they like to try the drinks i've had i've tried the drinks at horror nights before but it you know they're they're um they're good i know there's like fun drinks yeah some people go crazy but it's that's expensive if you're trying to go crazy on mixed drinks, even if you're buying a blinky cup and doing refills, that is still a very expensive night, my friend. <laughs> you know, like the, like unless you're like someone who obviously can ha- like can't really handle it as much. Um, those are the people that are probably the more uh, I would think maybe more more dangerous. The people that that go way past their limit w- without even really thinking about it. Um, yeah, so. I don't know. It, it, I don't think there's. I don't think it's a thing you can really do. Um, I think it's just kind of like, you know, like and, and yeah, no blinky cups. Like I, I totally agree with you. Like it's they put it in the commercial. Now this is the right kind of. This is the response I like to see. Now I am a freestyle tumbler guy myself. That is the fine beverage of choice of any choice. You have a lot more choices, and it's a lot cheaper. You only pay what. $20 for a cup for all night, unlimited whatever you want, whether it's whatever. Um, I mean, if you, I will say, if you don't want to do that, bring a water bottle. It's free. Uh, water's free. Uh, so you could save a few bucks that way. Um, yeah, stay hydrated. I mean, water in general is definitely beneficial, um, regardless of whether you have a free cup or not. So I'm saying if you're just, if you're just looking to drink water, bring a water bottle, it'll be save you a little bit of money and you just need to have it. And it's free. Again, all the freestyle machines have free water at Universal. So, and if you don't want to, and if let's say a freestyle machine is not nearby, you can go into a quick service place and ask, and they'll give you a free cup of water. But you need to, yeah, drink water during horror nights. It's, it's happening. Um, it, it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Um, um, if the maze is Silent Hill, it'd be the same location in Hollywood. So, um, maybe I can see in Hollywood. So it would be over here in the mummy queue? Question mark. That's what it's showing over here in the in the in the Hollywood location is in the mummy queue. Um but um Universal Universal does try to water down the drinks, they're not that strong. I mean, yeah, I'm not a uh yeah, so mummy queue awesome. That's that's that would be a really interesting coincidence. Um no, like like for me, I, I'm not someone again, I don't drink like that. So like I I I don't really I don't have as much of a say I'm not as experienced with it because I just don't really like it that much but um no like obviously like I've had it it's it's really the sugar and stuff that weighs you down so I don't even try to really do the mixed drinks like that cuz it's all the sugar all of the other stuff they put in there that just like like oof like it is like it, it just and especially if you're just chowing down on on event food it's just like hey, pace yourself I will say pace yourself in food, food, drinks, whatever. I, that happened to me last year where I went crazy a little bit and I had one item that just put me out for the rest of the night. And I was like, I got to go home. <laughs> I, can't, I can't be out here. Um, HGN Tumblr. Yes, I love mine. Uh, mine is I have from 20. I buy one every year just to just to have it, even if I don't use it. But I do use them um, from time to time. So 
Um, but uh, yeah, I do. I, I love. I got the Legends Collide one that year that came out, and then the uh, the Never Go Alone one, the one that had all the IPs on it. Um. Yeah, the the Saul Fancher. Yeah, there's just it's not like. It's not healthy by any means, but it's like, you know, I mean, it's good. And you want you, you treat yourself. It's Halloween Hornets. Um, the use of surf shots. Yeah, that was a whole thing. Like, it, like if you, if you like, you know, the blood bags and all that stuff, right? And they, they kind of move. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I remember blood bags um, being the whole controversy and them having to basically shut it down and completely. Even that last year, from what I heard, I want to say on the Unmasked the Horror Tour, maybe where they someone said it. That they that last year they ordered them and then they and then there was a last minute decision to pull them and they literally had to get rid of all of them that they already ordered. I feel like I heard that. I feel like I remember hearing that somewhere. Somebody told me that one. Um, I want to say it was unmasking the horror tour. I feel like that sounds like something that I heard in the unmasking the horror tour. Unmasking the horror tour. Um, yeah, blood bags. So they basically would have and I, and if anybody who's more familiar with the event during that time can fill fill them in. But like. The idea is like, you know, blood bag and yeah. Um, drink water. Yeah, drink water, everybody. In general, but also during Horror Nights. Um, I think Universal has toned down the events, drinks and removal of intense gore being examples. Yeah, I, I think that they have. And I think Orlando, again, I, I keep saying this and I think Hollywood does it too, but Orlando... It's just less intense of an event. I mean, I think in general because it's just the more accessible event. It's the bigger one. It's the bigger, you know, bigger zones, bigger houses, bigger IPs, all that stuff. Like, it, it's it's the bigger of the events, more stuff, and I feel like it. They try to draw more people to Orlando, um, and so they tone it down a little bit. Um, yes, Quiet Place in Highland Hill. We like, huh? What are we? What are we listening to? Uh, yeah, solid Sam. Will you do a dream house video this year? Yes, I actually have. I have a, I want to start doing like event concepts. So I, I'm going to, I want to, y'all are getting a filled in on this. Um, I put it in my community tab. So I'm, so I'm in the process of working on an update for my dream map video last year. Um, an updated version, um, with new houses, new concepts, same couple themes, but want to do that and i have some more dream maps for other like hypothetical events um that i have i'm working on so yeah plenty of dream map pitches my next video is going to be a big pitch video so if y'all like that kind of stuff that's coming um in the near future um silent hill blood bag some of the ghosts with getting harassed oh yeah that was definitely a, a big aspect of it too and i know they do it at other haunts but horror nights obviously the changing and a changing event um, got to be Joel's at, you, um, in, at Horror Nights? If so, that is awesome. Um, that's awesome. Um, going to this comment, I'm waiting, waiting for the response to that, and then I'll, then I'll, um, do this one. We do deep dives into some of the other icons. Um, yeah, I'll do, I'll do other icon videos, um, in, because, because I, I would, I want to do some history of like icons, um, especially this year. I have one. I have a couple planned that are not icons, but it is, uh, but it's definitely um, history related to the icons. Um, but I, but yeah, I could do some deep dives into any other icons. Um, uh, so if anybody has any icons they want to hear about, let me know um, in the community tab or here. Um, Joel last year, so you did. Oh, that's awesome. That that is so cool. Um, in Hollywood, yes. Uh, how was that? That's that sounds that sounds awesome. Um, awesome to see we have some some, some scare actors uh, in here. Um, oh shoot! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Harry, they have to get rid of them. Yeah, they they definitely just threw them away. Yeah, I'm kidding. I don't know what they did with them. Um, I don't know what they did with them. I don't know what they where those blood bags went. Um, Lore and history videos is much fun. Uh, thank you for watching them. Um, there are more coming. Um, I want to try some different videos. This are like some more um, lore and history when we get to see what what's coming. So if it's like, if it's like, um, like like for example, last year was Oddfellow, so I did that, and, and I want to do another video um, 
before the event, kind of like the history more of the original houses. Um, I thought that video was a lot of fun. Made that video very, very short notice, um, but uh, that one was a lot of fun to make. So that was definitely, um, that's definitely something that um, I can do more of and I will do more of. There'll be more other, I'm planning on do making that more of my sort of angle this year versus, I mean, updates definitely when we get stuff, uh, pretty much when we get new information, new updates, announcements, lots of stuff from Universal. You'll be seeing videos on that, but a lot of other stuff too. Doing haunts all around this year. Matt had to memorize all the lines for uh, for Joel. I bet um, that's that's such a I mean that's such a, a pivotal character that I wish wish we had more of in our house. But um, it's awesome that you get to be a part of that and get to say, "Hey, I'm I was Joel in in uh, some parts of Last of Us." So that's awesome. Um, Y'all had a great Last of Us house, um, from what I've seen at least. I know. Some people have been to Hollywood, so I know they can attest to that. But um, do you think we'll be getting another icon this year? I, I think so. And I'm actually going to take take this chance to go back to this little, little lollipop up here. And uh, we're going to talk about Sweets Revenge. Um, now, this has been one that a lot of people have been talking about as far as originals go. Um, honestly, both of these are related to this conversation but sweets revenge so um for those who went in 2022 or yeah for those who went in 2022 or, or pay or sort of paying attention sweets revenge was one of the fan favorite scare zones of that year um i think it was such a success did you see the canyon tribute store I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a connection here maybe we'll see some sort of connection in a second um but no so Sweet Revenge, right, having this deep lore with major sweets and the candy and this interconnected story that it, it's just this big, this big situation. So fan favorite scare zone. I loved it. It was one of my favorite scare zones of that event. A um, whole lot of fun. One of the best funny zones they've had recently, um, for sure. Like, I think in just that so much original stuff. Um, and uh, I, I think this is the exact comment that that, that, that um, sums it up. Listening to the music, getting to see the floats and seeing the costumes and all the fun, uh, the citizens of the town, the, ki the kids, Major Sweets, um, Mrs. Sweets, I believe was the, the other character's name. Um, really great, really great scare zone. So the theory is that Soundstage 24B will be another uh, scare zone turned to a house, Sweets Revenge becoming its own house. Um, Sweets Revenge, there's a lot to pull from. So much. Whether you go back to sort of the story behind Sweets Revenge, or we go like, you know, we go forward in talking about what's next. Um, what's the candy factory look like? Uh, Sweets versus Meats, although it's not spelled like this, could make some kind of connection. I don't know. Um, but... Yeah, I think th there's a lot of love for the zone, and I think that it it could make a great a great house. Um, I do too. Love scare zones that turn into houses. Devin's Pier was great um, in terms of like bringing that zone to life. Um, candy mutants, real ones will know about the candy mutants. I'm um, getting really to see them. Them like like what like what. What it happens with the candy? Like, I know they eat the candy and they turn crazy, but, like, what really happens? You know, like, that that's the question that I want to know. Um, so, yeah, for sure. I, I think this is a really great, really great idea. Would love to see this. And, yeah, um, I, I would be all on board. All on board if we get to see a crazed chocolate factory coincidentally happening at the same time as, of course, the Willy, Wond Willy, uh, Willy Wonka <laughs> situation over there um in glasgow so um glasgow glasgow sorry harry if i'm pronouncing that wrong glasgow i think that's how you say it um either way that whole situation um so could we see a house kind of based on that twisted candy factory the unknown yes Although I don't know how close they would tie. Like, obviously, I don't think they're going to base a house off of this. I think that they, they they plan these things years in advance. Very likely, they could have been planning out this 
um, when they built the scare zone. Like they said, okay, we're going to do a house, maybe not next year, but maybe in the coming years, house in, inspired by the zone. So I think that, um, yeah, I think that, that I think this is definitely something that could be could be happening and could be uh, could be big if it does happen. One of the big originals, I think, a fan favorite for sure. Um, so, yeah. But speaking of this comment, I'm gonna go right back to it because I did put it on there. Tribute store last year. Now, I love the tribute store last year. I was in the tribute store last year. I have physical proof of my involvement in the tribute store last year. My face is on this comic. Oh, there it is. I love this. The Tribute to Terror was one of my favorite, if not my favorite thing they did last year out of anything. Houses, zones, everything. It was beautiful. As someone who's a hardcore comic nerd, as someone who loves comic art, as someone who loves this kind of just style, like a very like much like a creep show vibe, Tales from the Crypt, EC Comics. Um, I loved it, every moment of it. So... You know, looking at the skull for Soundstage 24A, and I know somebody somebody has uh, I, I've been looking out at where I could find this, but that skull was featured in relation to the tribute store. It looks a lot like this one at the bottom corner. This teen looks a lot like that one, um, but there is um, but that this skull specifically here we see in the, the black and white one has been featured. I cannot tell you exactly where I. I you, it's escaping me. I've seen it before, though. If somebody knows exactly where, please tell me. I've looked through all my photos, and I can't find it. It was on a T-shirt. I know they had um, the tribute. Like, they had the certified fan shirt um, there with a similar – the skull here. Like, they, yeah, I've seen this shirt. This this is this has been somewhere. Um, so either way, when I saw this, this was the first thing I laser-focused – laser focus my attention on was this symbol right here in that we could be seeing the tribute to terror coming to a house um, in a very similar situation as the lollipop. Um, so how would they do this? Well, I feel like they definitely could go the slaughter cinema route, make an anthology, pull some stories from here, pull some stories from HHM past creatures, the in between asylum and wonderland. I don't think they will do this, but they could, Maybe some nods to this because I know I, I don't know if they want to do 3D for this, but I think that there is a possibility of them doing that. I also think because it's black and white, there was a black and white section. And if you saw the thumbnail for this video, you might know what I'm talking about. False Idols Part One, the Boar Schuster. False Idols Part One, the Boar Schuster story. If I'm trying to find a picture of this. Um, um, but yeah, so, so it was like a comic book noir story. And if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, if y'all don't know what, like, if you want to learn more about it, um, you can go check out my video. I, I made a full video on this, um, made a full video on this in a long time ago. <laughs> it was, it was, I think around the time of the event last year. Um, so this sort of black and white aesthetic. If they were to take this and make it a full house, this very much almost like a comic book adventure um, and uh, a comic book story and expand it beyond and make it a full thing. So you go back to the, the question, who's the icon for this year? Is it Major Sweets? Is it maybe Mr. Schuster? Is it maybe someone else? I think I did hear this. I know I, I heard it when they did the um, the round table with Mike Aiello and Charles Gray um, and Laura Sauls when they did that and they had the, the, the team come in and, and talk about it. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I think that, that, that I, this is great. I love this store. Uh, I love everything about it. Um, I Again, I was involved in it, so <laughs> not really. I didn't make it, but I was uh, had a featured uh, role. Um Speaking of Boris, I hear a rumor on Kevin Heimbach's channel that the scare zone might be connected to the case files. Um, that could be cool. Um, I have not heard anything about that, but that could be cool. Um, uh, yeah. Um, 
case files. I think it, I think if they were to do a Boris here, I think that could be a lot of fun. Um, but if they're not doing a Boris here, if this is maybe just a one-off, or if, again, if this is more tribute to Taylor Broadley, um, I think this could be great for an anniversary year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always said that Boris and Legendary Truth should be the in-between. Not the house, the in-between. Um, but the in-between, the um, in-between, the the um you know the the event icons and stuff like that like it, it should be in between i'm just flashing some pictures up here um but it should be in between all of that stuff like it should be in between the icons every year um them doing something new with with legendary truth and making it kind of like the the thread between icon years um so i'm flashing some pictures on the screen for those who did not get to visit this store Unfortunately, um, Ghostbusters there. Um, but yeah, so what do we think about this? Um, I met the creative team, some of the creative team, when they did the Sunday Five Nine. I think Boris has a lot more to come. I think Boris, and I'm all I'm all for it. I am a Boris nerd. I love Boris, and I love the sort of noir style. It's such so appealing to me um, personally, and I, that's why I love that room. So, and I think Boris also has a lot more to come on this channel. And I'm just going to leave it right there. But, um, yeah, we will be talking about Boris this year for sure. Uh, whether that's in the context of this event or past events. Um, but, yeah, what do we think about this? I know there's another one about Willy Wonka experiences accurate to the book. Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe we'll have to play detective at the event and figure out who the icon is, noir style. Now, Harry, I think that would like wouldn't that be so great though? Let's do a full-on investigation in terms of like not just like the the, the icon, but like the how like like figuring out what we're doing this year. Like what what's what, what's the theme? What's the idea? Like the um Last year they teased it with the runes and they said, oh, we're going to, the, the legend is real. Here's a static video, pick, picking pieces together. And it's like, they did it. They had it, they had it started. And then they kind of dropped the ball on it. And I was like, well, maybe this year, if we do Boris, if we were to do a Boris, you have, you have to have interactivity with the Boris. Because I mean, look at how many, how many things that they do with legendary truth that were interactive Have doing the repository, doing all the stuff. Um, that was what 2016 doing the stuff on the website, um, back in, in, uh, 20, 2008, um, and doing that whole thing with the event, like so much is to be done with Boris. There's so much opportunity to make it this very tied in event. And I think that I think that if they don't, and if they do involve Boris in some way, and they don't do it, I think I think it's a little bit of a. I'm gonna say it's like it's not missed opportunity. Um, make sure it's rewarding for casual fans. I think that's I think that's exactly what they've been trying to do with the tribute store backlog builder, like putting because like for us, right? We like Boris Schuster. We love the lore. We love the history. But for those who don't know, they're like, what is this? Like, I, I don't I don't care about this. But making the first of all, making it a very defined setting, like a noir, people can piece it together, like an old school detective story. You did it in the tribute store, and they set up. They they kind of told us who Boris was in that. They're like, for us, we already know, right? We know you know about Mary Ghana. We know about um, the Wyandotte estate, and we know about case files, and we know about all that stuff. But maybe some of us do. But but it is known. But for casual fans, they see it. Black and white noir detective. Okay, there's already an image in your head of exactly what that looks like. and But you add a little bit of supernatural. You add the fish people in the context of the story, the Cthulhu monster. And the fact that False Idols was a part one. It was not a complete story. It was a part one. So making it a setup to something bigger, to something wilder, could be perfect. That could have been the setup that we needed. But also, let's retell some of that if they do make it a house because there are some people that did not visit the event last year. And I would like to see some of those scenes put together in a house anyway, regardless. Even though I was there and I, I had plenty of time <laughs> in that in that store. Um, but yeah, I think this would be great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's do – let's – a Boris here is something that I would love. I would love a Boris here and um, – 
if it happens, it happens. If not, if not, I if not this year, then maybe in the future. But um, tribute to terror is definitely something to look to. Again, if you don't know what this is, if you're not less familiar with this, I got a video. You can watch a full tour. I know there's like a 30 minute tour out there that's a full every detail. Soak it all in because this is such a cool idea, such a cool concept that Hornets did um, for. Oh, um, Horror Nights did for last year. Okay. Um, I'm going to take some few last minute questions. I think it is about time to wrap this up because we did talk about pretty much everything. We have Death Eaters. We have Nightmare Fuel. Um, we did talk about that a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm probably going to wrap this up here in a few minutes. But again, if anybody has any last minute questions for HHN, for the map, for me uh, in general, I know there's some video questions about videos. Um, the next video... I'm going to try to have it at the beginning of next week, um, ready, because it's a, it's a big one, and I want to make sure it's, like, good, because it's it's a it's a pretty big idea um, that I'm doing, and I want to do a pitch for, so, um, but, yeah. Um, overall, the map, um, I like it. Uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's a little more interesting than last year's map, if I'm being honest. Um, opinions on DreamWorks land, um, I'm excited for it. Um, I never made a video talking about it because it was just kind of, it, it fell in between two videos that I was doing. And I was like, I, I don't, I think it was when I was doing the Hollywood video and I was like, I need to, I need to focus on this and get this done. Um, but yeah, no, definitely cool. Looks great. Great. Going to be great for kids. Um, probably not for me as much. Decided to try the snacks and see some of the meet and greets. Want to see that Poe meet and greet um, and just see the land and have it no construction walls. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, I think Boar should be like Oddfellow in the sense that he's in every scare zone. Yeah, I mean, I think I think a legendary truth like scare zone, I think would be to be great. I think it would be great having him roaming around, you know, maybe seeing. I understand he doesn't shape shift, and I don't, I don't really want them to play that card necessarily. I don't want them to to go too hard on it uh, because they kind of did that with Oddfellow already. But yeah, have him roaming around. Have him come out at certain points. Um, they end up closing Simpsons with the rights come do with the, what you hope they replace it with. What I hope, what I would like them to replace it with and what they're going to replace it with are going to probably be two different things. Um, I know a lot of people are talking about Pokemon and uh, that would be very cool. Um, a lot of people are also talking about um, maybe more DreamWorks because it's like the DreamWorks land is kind of small. So maybe expanding it out, maybe making like a full fledged dark ride or whatever. Um, it would be also pretty cool. Um, I've... I think that could be fun. I think that could be my, I don't know what my pick would be. Cause you know, everybody wants to say back to the future, but I, I really would like back to the future to have a whole land. I'm being honest with you, like a full, full big area where you can do Hill Valley and you can make a ride. That's not that ride because that ride I think is sorry. I think it's too old. I think it needs to go. Um, I think that ride is, is uh, it's past it's time in my opinion. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen because we're not, we're kind of moving on from the map. Um, so yeah, no, I think DreamWorks, I think would be cool. I think it would be cool. could be cool to have some like dark ride, something cool. Um, Harry, uh, don't, don't stay up. I'll stay up for this, but thank you for coming. Thank you for coming in the stream. Same thing with Christian. Thank you for showing love. Um, and, uh, yeah, th thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Um, we got more stuff coming, but, um, for sure. Um, if they do Back to the Future, I hope it gets added to Epic Universe. Yeah, I think it would be a great IP. I think Back to the Future would fit pretty perfectly into Epic Universe, if I'm being honest with you. Um, even though it's not like a fantastic world like Harry Potter or Dragons or whatever, there is a, there's a lot of fun elements in there. And if they're going to have nods to Back to the Future in, um, in Starfall Racers, maybe. Um, yep, thank you. Thank you all for coming along. Um, again, it was a whole lot of fun. Again, it's nearly three hours, so y'all y'all really ran it up and 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 I went to the chat. So thank you very much for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope y'all have a great night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are located in the world. Um, it is about ten o'clock for me right now, so I'm gonna go and uh, rest my voice and uh, and get some sleep. So, um, 168 days, yep. Yeah, so we're looking forward to. Um, but again, thank y'all for coming in the stream and, uh, more streams to come, not as frequently as I've been doing them. Um, not every week. Um, but when we have new stuff to talk about, we'll have a stream. So thank y'all for coming and, uh, I'll see y'all in the next video again.
coming probably early to mid next week. So, yeah, have a good night and uh, see y'all later.